Wow. You got Negroes in here already on the Bozak. You know what I'm saying? Those are the words we used to use back in the days when Negroes be riding the Bozak. And, uh, you know, we don't play the homo games. But you could tell when you had Negroes love to hate you because you got two thumbs down. They ain't even see the video yet. But those are the Negroes that, that love to ride the Bozak. They will be in the building watching the video because they love to hate you. Peace and Black Power family. Welcome to another Sarnetta TV House of Consciousness production. And we're going to continue on with this powerful build. This one is going to be even um, more powerful because it gets turned up. Prince York versus Brother Jabari Ozazi. And um, I missed the end. It's supposed to be when two worlds collide. Let me put that in on there right quick. Hold on. Let's get it. When two worlds collide. There we go. I did it. Refresh your page. You'll see it. When two worlds collide. Nuwapian versus Comedic Science Part 2. It's going down. I got three Bozak suckers up in the building so far. Come on, family. Hit me with the thumbs up. We're going to run these haters up out of here because they think none of you guys would like it or would thumb it up. So run the haters out of here. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be in here too, watching. So we need new information. Get it and we'll get it up there. Get the new information and we'll get it up there. Are you a patron, by the way? The one that's asking for the new, new information? I think you need to be a patron first before you can start begging for um, anything else. You see, because a lot of y'all always say, I'll be begging. So before you can beg for anything new, you got to be a patron. <laughs> Real talk. Shout out to all my patrons that's keeping this joint alive. Family, I got to take you back. Take you back to my very first theme song before we get started. How many of y'all remember the theme song? If you are a true Sarnetta Black News 102 fan, what was the very first theme song of Sarnetta TV? Here you go. Let's go, family. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to end it with that. But I got to come back with the second song of Sarnetta TV. Let's get it. Sarnetta TV. Sarnetta TV's growing. 
Y'all better get this now. Y'all better get this now. The truth be overflowing. It's like a full black college. Nah, nah, that's not the second one. That's the same one. What I'm doing? I'm fucking up. Let's get it. Shit that you've been told, and you need that info. info. Sign that up, TV. Sign that up, TV. Tune in the consciousness and watch the lies fold. Then you can let the truth flow. Sign that up, TV. Sign that up, TV. When you feel that melanin about to explode, like you feel the wind blow. It's Sign that up, TV. Sign that up, TV. I know you got the truth, but you can get more. So you continue to grow You know nobody do it better than Sarnetta TV We in the building, family And I think this the one that the people remember Let, Let's get it Somebody tell me, please. Sign of the TV. Sign of the TV. Looking for some conscious information. Sign of the TV. Looking for some. Confrontation Side of the TV A little debating A lot of hating Side of the TV Ah, my man said this song is ass Come on, y'all Information Side of the TV Conscious information Sign at the TV All right, all right, family. So um you know what it is. We're gonna get right into this, but let me let me inform you and let you know what happened last night. We had a powerful, powerful build. With three grandmaster teachers, Brother Jabari, Dr. Reggie, and Professor Issa, and family. When I tell you that this bill was like no other, we started with um we started with Africa, dealing with the different continents of Africa. We didn't deal with ancient Kemet because I wanted the people to hear the stories about other parts of Africa. And we went into that. I'm telling you, these three right here is awesome. And then right from there, they started going into the political science. Woo! When I tell family, I was definitely impressed by all three of these brothers. See, a lot of people think that all they can talk about is the history and going back. Man, we started talking about today and about the politics that affects us today. Y'all don't want to miss that build, but you already know I got to give it to the Patreons. They got to get that information. So I'm going to upload that tonight, Patreons. All my Patreons, you will be getting it tonight. I will share it with the public maybe um, next month. Going into next month, y'all will be able to see it as well. Because when I get new shit, I, I release the other one. And that's why you're going to see the Prince York and Jabari debate. So let me give you a little sneak preview. But before we went there, we interviewed the first lady, the first lady of Brother Jabari. Okay? Let's get right into that. The first lady. And uh, where, where is that? Where are we at? We right here. Let's go. Sneak peek. Most of the times we don't get to hear the sisters. We always hear the brothers. So here's a sneak peek of Dr. Anika Osazi. Peace and black power. 
Welcome to another edition of Black News 102, Sarnetta TV, uh, The House of Consciousness. But today we are again at the Center for the Restoration of Ma'at and the Shrine of Ma'at. And we have a few moments to interview Dr. Onika Asazi. Now, many of you have seen uh, Brother Jabari Asazi, right, do the work, right? Very rarely have you seen the wife of the house, the great wife of the house. And um, she's an extraordinary woman. And we have this great time just to ask her a few questions. Um, Dr. Anika Osasi, can you just please tell us a little bit about how you got into the Nile Valley culture? We heard, uh, we know that you studied Meta Nature before a lot of people and you studied Meta Nature in Cornell University. So you got the side of the European. Mm -hmm. You excelled, mm -hmm. you got it there. Um, you teach Meta Nature mm -hmm. here and you also, um, how can I say, practice Nile Valley culture on a very high end. You are initiated. Can you just tell us a little bit about the experience um, and your many trips to ancient Kemet? And because we don't get a chance to see women in the culture as much. Most of the time, men are taking over. So we have this little bit of time because we could count the number of Nile Valley male scholars, right? I know there's Dr. Roslyn Jeffries, mm -hmm. right? There's Dr. Riketty Amen. There are great women in the culture, and you are one of the greats. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> thank you. So, give us a little. Okay, so how did I get involved in the Nile Valley culture? Um, well, I'll start off and say that my family is actually Baptist. They're Christian. And um, I can say from a very young age, I thought something was different in terms of how I saw the world. I had a lot of questions. Um, I didn't like going to church, and I used to always cause ruckus for my family whenever they would take me. I had to go to Bible study. I went to a Christian school, Episcopalian, for about eight years. And I remember the whole process of sitting, standing, kneeling, reciting texts that I didn't really understand and having to take religion classes. And um, I would always question, well, who exactly is God? What does God look like? And why are we supposed to just believe and just have faith? And I would get into a lot of trouble because, you know, you're not supposed to question. You're just supposed to believe. And whenever I would ask the questions, what does God look like? And they would say, oh, well, you know, God just, you know, God is God. You know, they'll ask about color. And I would always see, well, he always looks like one color to me whenever I'm going to church. Uh, so I think, at some, I'd say as early as five years old, there was a point where I just felt like I wasn't getting enough information, I didn't get enough answers, and I couldn't just have faith. I, I couldn't believe without having more information. So for a long time, I just didn't involve myself with any particular tradition. I just went to school, went through the motions. Um, and then I got to high school and I started reading a lot of different books mainly on Greek mythology and I remember at that point thinking wow you know there's a, a god for everything and it seems like they have answers for everybody's questions and I started exploring that a little bit just reading all these mythology books and thinking oh it was really you know interesting text then when I got to Cornell and um, I didn't start off as a linguistics major but initially um, when I switched to the major and started looking at the different languages uh, I saw that they had at the time Egyptian hieroglyphics or Meru Neda. and I decided hey why not how many people would I ever encounter that would speak this or read it so I took the class enjoyed it and um, around the same time that's when I started to get to know Jabari. Um, we were friends at the time and then we started talking more about our interests and Jabari was talking about the fact that he focused on ancient African history. He was interested in um, the peoples, the anthropology, the architecture and I talked about how much I was interested in the language. So we started sharing information with each other and I would teach him some words, he would teach me some history and then he said well you know what I found out that there's actually a place that actually um, practices comedic spirituality. That's why we just said ancient Egyptian spirituality because we didn't know. And he said, would you be interested in coming with me to the temple? 
So I went with him to the temple. Which temple? Uh, we started off at a star set. Yes. Uh, for and I know Jabari had been going there for a couple of years. You went through. Anything? No, we were still dating. We were still dating. Yeah. So um, he had gone to a star set for a couple of years. Went through a lot of initiations. Moved up the ranks, and um, but decided that he he wanted something that was a little bit more close knit because it was a really l large organization and he wasn't getting to know a lot of people. And one of his friends introduced him to the Shrine of Ptah and Baba Heru. Okay. So he went to that temple and felt more comfortable, said it felt more like a, you know, a close -knit environment where he can actually have one-on-one -on -one sessions with Baba Heru and asked me if I'd be interested in going. So I ended up going with him and then we went through the initiation. And I think this was back in 98. So we actually did the form for initiation, and I've been a Camite ever since. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you have some professional degrees. Yes, <laughs> a few. Um, so I have a bachelor's degree from Cornell University in linguistics, Africana studies, focused on ancient language Wait, and. I want you to answer that question again with the mic because I want I want them oh. to hear it. Right? So pick it up so they can hear it. I'm gonna don't worry about it. I'm not gonna edit. So, Dr. Anika Osasi, you have some professional degrees. I forgot to edit it. What are they? <laughs> yeah, so I have, I have my bachelor's degree from Cornell University in linguistics and African languages, and also um, a concentration in cognitive studies. I have my master's from New York University in higher education administration, and I just finished my doctorate at Northeastern University in education, focused on higher education administration. And I'm actually working on an advanced certificate right now in public health. That's incredible. Uh, one of the things that African people do is we raise up our women, right? And we raise up our women. We have a long history in Nile Valley culture of celebrating the African woman and what she means. And so we're going to have a few minutes to talk about that before we go into our next segment. But I would be remiss, family. Uh, I want everybody to pay attention to uh, Dr. Anika Sazi, so you can turn the camera to her. Do you see it? Right? Dr. Anika Sazi, like, what you're wearing is just incredible. You are a black queen. If they've never seen a black queen, right, a uh, Nile Valley, uh, you could say Hemet Neturt, right, Hemet Netter, right, you can say uh, uh, goddess. If there was any living picture that one could um, look at. He always flatters me. <laughs> That's fine. No, but, but I'm celebrating through you our culture, mm -hmm. right? Tell us what you're wearing, sister. I mean, <laughs> we see Jabari. Jabari, he be flashing a little something, right? But Jabari ain't got nothing on his wife. So <laughs> let's, 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 so what, you have this feather. You have, let's, let's just, yes. Well, you know. <laughs> I have to start off with all of the pieces that were made by Baba Heru, Aunt Rasa, Maj Sepeta. So I know most people see me carrying my Ankh, which is, of course. I can hold this while I'm <laughs> so, so you ain't so got to do nothing. Just keep talking. We have the Ankh that he made, which is personalized to each person who carries it. So each piece has significance in terms of who I'm supposed to be, who I, um, which energies that I wanted to emulate and what I draw energy from to be able to do the work that I do on a regular basis. So mine is one of the, probably the only aunt that has a crystal in the bottom okay. out of what, and I know I probably stressed Baba out trying to get a special aunt, <laughs> but it was important for me to also have some crystal energy to be able to do the work that I do. Um, of course, he made our Hebs Maitawi bands, our wedding bands. So that is an image of an Ankh. That's a two-piece that uh, part of it I received as a uh, commitment Can ring. Some diamonds again. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our commitment ring, which is also our wedding band. I have a Maat ring, so which also has my comedic name Unfrika Maat uh, written in the metanetter on the top. I have a ring that I actually celebrate with both my mom and my grandmother. We all have the same ring, and it's a symbol of Ast, which represents motherhood. So that's something that we all wear together. Or when they were, when my my mom was alive, and my grandma, who's now 104, still has hers. Um, on my other hand, I have a ring that was actually given to me by a priestess, D.K. Dyson, who did the um, the opening 
song for our show, Comedic Legacy, today. Okay. So she actually gave us a gift coming to this sh uh, show, and actually um, you'll hear her voice every time we have our show aired. Another, I love my name, so <laughs> I have another aunt with my name in both English and the language, and with the feather of Ma'at, which is important to me as someone who tries to embody balance. And then I have a ring that embodies both Sekhmet and Bast, because I always believe in duality, and I feel that they're both aspects of those divine energies are within me. So Sekhmet, when I need to bring that fiery energy, I have that as a reminder of Show who I am. For the camera. Slow, <laughs> slow motion. Slow, put it in slow motion. So there are times when I have to bring the wrath, and that's my segment side. Oh. But then I always have to remember to balance myself out with the boss ring. So that's where the, the more nurturing side, the more patient now, side. Is <laughs> What's going on with this okay, well, this you have a, a month for this one, no. Um, <laughs> so. The bracelet has a Brazilian topaz uh, that is important in terms of the, the stone's color because my art's color is a light blue. So that's what I wanted to focus on in terms of the energy. And then I have a combination of both the masculine and feminine energies. So I have a Tiet symbol, which looks like an Ankh with the arms down. It's actually a symbol of uh, feminine energy, feminine um, principle, and also Something one of my initiates mentioned is that the reason the arms are down is that it's a t point in time when you're not able to give birth. So it's a symbol that's primarily in red. You'll see it, that, um, women wearing it whenever they're having their menstrual cycle. But you'll also see it as a symbol um, that represents the tie of Ost or the knot of Ost. So that's what the Tiet comes from. You'll see Mary Magdalene wearing it. Yeah. You'll see priestesses of Ost it wearing it. It's the blood of Ost. It's the blood of Ost. So I have that, and I have it combined with the Jed column of Asar, who is her divine mate. So it's the stability, it's the backbone of Asar. Okay, we're going to leave some of that. Yeah. We're going to leave some <laughs> of that, except for... And then the Usek. Um, this is a color that was actually made for me by a sister in Detroit named okay. Pamela Jackson. So okay, this is we're not yeah. Go the earrings. We're not gonna go through the head. <laughs> like we, um, except for the feather mark, because we gotta get into yes. the knowledge. So you have an ostrich, so ostrich feather. feather. Why do you have an ostrich feather? So again, like I said, um, the energy that I try to embrace and embody at all times is balance, which is Maat. Okay. And Maat wore the feather on her head um, as a symbol of who she was, but also as a symbol of justice, order, harmony, balance, reciprocity. Um, and uh, law. So when you look at the judgment scene yes. and we talk about what happens to you when you pass, a lot of people say, well, what, is, what happens? So the belief is that your heart was weighed against the feather. And if your heart was lighter than the feather, that means that you lived a righteous life, that you uh, were ma'akeru, true of voice. Yes. So it was important for you to try and do everything that you could to tr not just treat yourself well, but to treat other people well. And when you're going through your transition, there's a point where you're going to be judged by those deeds and what you did for others and for yourself. Why are most of the Nile Valley high netters? Why are they female? Actually, well, there's a balance of both masculine and feminine. I would say that the, each one has a complement. So, you know, for you have Sekhmet, but there's also Sekhem. And they're both energies and force. They're both you know, he healing energies. There was Bast, and even before then, they said that there was a Bast. You know, Bess had Twa'ert. So each one typically has a counterpart. So I, I wouldn't say it's completely even or there's one, more than one or the other, but I'd say that there's always compliments. So why is Ma'at one of the most important and it's the feminine? Mm. Why is that? Why, mm. why is Ma'at? And then um, get the mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there. Um, so when you look at the pantheons, mm -hmm. they give way to certain female, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and that yes, they are males, but the males seem to be uh, supporters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. help this stay uh, continue, right? Mm -hmm. That is their job. But the principles themselves. Uh, the 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 um, the big ones certainly like my aunt, mm -hmm. right? Sachet. Yes, they have compliments, but the compliments help them. Mm -hmm. So, why do you think, of all cultures, the Nile Valley culture mm -hmm. cared about this? Why, why do you think? Well, you have to have a womb to give birth. 
it's important to have the feminine energy, and that doesn't mean that she can do it alone. You need both the masculine and feminine energy for that to exist. But when you look at the stories that are told, the ancient myths, you'll notice that almost every deity had some kind of birth or, or a story of, of their creation, but Ma'at always existed. So when you look at the Naun or the primordial waters, Ma'at was already there, and through her, there was other creation. So you had to have the woman present in all things for us to even exist. In the word inter, you have both masculine and feminine. You have the T that represents the feminine sound and the R that represents the masculine sound. So even in the word creation, you have to have both forces. In terms of why the woman is so prominent, you, ha you have to look at it from a standpoint of we are all coming from the mother. We all have to come from that source. The mother carries you for what, nine to 10 months. Mm -hmm. And most people don't think about that. Most people will say, oh, well, um, you have to have both. There's no way that you can look at it from a standpoint of not having both. But most, when you look at both societies, they're not focused on the woman. That's unfortunate. So one last question, and uh, producer, he has a question. Mm -hmm. But there is my aunt, but there is not. Nut is extraordinary. When we, there's no way you can look at anything with nut and this shoe and this gab. Mm -hmm. They're there, mm -hmm. but nut is. Uh, she's the heaven. She's, she's all encompassing. That's right. She's mm -hmm. through it, and she swallows Ray, and then she gives birth to Ray, and mm -hmm. this whole system of the uh, the hours of the night, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All of that happens mm -hmm. through her, mm -hmm. right? It's time. Mm -hmm time when the sun is swallowed or ray is swallowed mm -hmm. to the time that it is reborn mm -hmm. in, from her womb, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying that the Nile Valley Africans not only uh, talked about women, right? Mm -hmm. They deified them into the highest sciences that we have. And we don't have other cultures that do that. Mm -hmm. We don't. So why do you think, uh, tell us about Nut, what you know about Nut. Mm -hmm. But you did mention already, you know, the, the whole concept of her engulfing all of the sun, giving birth to it again in the morning. You'll see her image on the top of most of the, the tombs. So when people would say, well, why in a tomb? Because it's always the concept of rebirth. You know, everyone says, okay, well, do you believe there's an afterlife? Well, yes. Do you believe that there's rebirth? Yes. Every day you have the opportunity to be reborn. And Newt was an, a representation of that. And you couldn't have any tomb without her being on the ceiling because it reminds you that you have more work to do. So even after you've passed, you have a continual commitment. You have a continual um, legacy that you have to leave for others. So I think Newt was important for many reasons. She um, is also a maternal force. You know, we talk about Ast being the great mother. We talk about Moot actually being the term for mother. But Newt is actually giving birth to everything that, to the, the one source that gives us all sustenance. You can't live without the sun. You can't live without Ra. So the fact that she has that much power, that she's giving birth to the one thing that you need, or at least one of the most important things you need to survive, I think is what makes her so incredible and so important. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, peace to you, Sister Dr. Anika. Um, yeah, what was it like? How did you come into knowledge of self? And what was it like going to Kemet for the first time? Did that change your life? Well, definitely. I'll say I'm always trying to come into self. I haven't arrived yet. I'm still learning. I'm still reading. Um, I, I'm still interacting with other people who have greater knowledge than I do, and I'm, I'm learning from them. So I would say there was always a part of me that questioned everything, and that's something that came from both of my parents. You know, My mom was a stickler for excellence and always focused on me doing well. My dad always was a proponent of reading. He was like, don't ask me the, the answer to a question. Go find out for yourself. So I was always like, well, Dad, why does this happen? You can find out in this book. Go read it. You know, so that was always important for me. I had to continue to find out answers for myself. So I'm still learning, I'm still searching. And I think it's a continual process of something from very young. In terms of Egypt, or, um, going back to the motherland, I have to say that 
it was just amazing going with students. So not only what, did I have my own transformation going on, I'm looking at young people who some of them never even left their own state, much less the country, and they're thinking about what it means to be connected to the civilization. A lot of them were taught that they had no connection to the civilization. So to watch them grow was important to me. And for me to actually see the monuments for the first time, I'll be honest and say I was disappointed because they were in ruins. And to see them in the condition that they're in and to hear that they were great and to hear how you couldn't even look at it and look at the pyramids and the sun or the Merkuti and the sun because, you know, the gleam from all the gold and the electrum and everything and the um, limestone at the time was so amazing when the sun hit it, it would blind you. You know, the amazing colors on the Haramaket, the fact that I couldn't see it in that condition actually pissed me off, I'm going to be honest. So I would say my first trip was challenging. It was um, realizing that a lot had been destroyed, realizing that people had tried to take this information away from us, that it took me so long to learn it, that, that really frustrated me. But then, you know, now we've been 14 times, and each time we see something incredible and we remind ourselves that our ancestors didn't play. They built things in stone because they wanted us to be able to go back and see it you know, go back and fetch it and remember our history. So now I go back with a different perspective and I honor the ancestors for all the work that they did and my job is to continue teaching other people what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Well, um, at some point, um, we would like to fix some things. Mm -hmm. um, at some point in another show, I'm gonna come back and you know Medinetra mm -hmm. and this is your house. <laughs> right? He lives in it with you. <laughs> you are the great wife, right? <laughs> and he lives in it with you. Mm -hmm. We want to walk around your house, mm -hmm. this house that you helped build. Mm -hmm. Because it's very, it's masculine, but it's also very feminine. Mm -hmm. So we want to know what's special about this house mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Because you put a lot of design work. Mm -hmm. He helped, right? Yeah. He's a supporter. Good morning, help. <laughs> but this is, but this is yeah. your house. Tell us, well, we have a few more seconds, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Why you pass segment. the mic there? I'm going to ask the question. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, uh, t we have a few more seconds for this segment, right? And we're going to go into a segment. Tell us what you love about your house, your shrine, your pair, what you, or I could say parrot, what you put into it what what is it about this that you made and you also have initiates mm -hmm. you you have initiates he has initiates but you have female initiates they're both they they're both yeah, we don't separate the two so separate. they're our initiates they're, yeah. okay mm -hmm. so tell us why you built this space for them okay. right mm -hmm. okay so i guess what i love the most about our home is that we did it together and that we both had input in every single room in the house. Um, the colors, so each room has a different color and it's significant for different reasons. So, you know, we have, we're in the Ra room right now, or Heru room, more than the Ra room. And then, um, so this is more Jabari's energy. This is where he got his name from. This is where he does most of his uh, energy work. And then we have our bedroom, which is purple. And that's for creativity and other activities. So, you know, uh, we are very excited to have purple fabric from our ceilings and uh, different shades of purple on the walls that all represent Pata and the energy force that we were trying to create in that space. And then our kitchen is green for a star and for the foods and the nourishment and everything that we're trying to bring in. So um, our shrine is sep two separate colors. So the kitchen is Tahuti for wisdom. So, of course, you want to be wise in terms of what you put in your body and how you nourish yourself. And the physical space of the shrine is red. So that's more the raw energy, the raw space. Or what we would say is a combination of the Herokuhuti space, the warrior, as well as the birth and creative space. <laughs> well, the first question, Javari loves to talk. So, yes, I knew that. <laughs> he, I mean, he's a great debater. He's been debating ever since I met him. I could give so a Hebrew sister the <laughs> I will say that is not, I am not the debater. That's not my function. That's not what I do. I like to watch my mate get into it and do it. He, you know, he does what he has to do, and I like to support I'm him. Really, and I give him ideas. <laughs> I give him ideas in the background 
of what he could say or who he could talk to or, you know, what I would like to see. But other than that, it's his show. You know, that's what he does. I'm not trying to do what he does. Um, in terms of talking to sisters, I, I'm more about conversation, not debate, and learning more about what they learn and why and what their purpose is and what they choose to do. You know, I admire Raketi Amen. And we both um, are, are teaching the language in different ways. By the way, my class is starting in October, so you know, visit our website and get more information on that, centerformyart.com. But um, you know, talking to her would be great. Queen of Four and I, of course, we're part of the same house. <laughs> so having conversations with her and her journey and where she's been and what oh, she that does. Would be nice. That would be nice with you. You know. <laughs> so I, I have a lot of respect for the sisters. The priestesses. Y'all need to talk to our priestesses who are both of the Shrine of Pata and the Shrine of Ma'at. We have some really powerful sisters who are out there doing incredible work. And to have them together to talk about what they do. And I would even interview them, uh, which we've actually done on our show. But I think people need to know more about what we're doing as women individually and what purposes we've chosen for ourselves. Okay, so um, with that, let's bring on our um, right. next up and coming. Thank you so much. Brother. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, brothers and sisters, powerful, powerful, um, powerful, powerful interview with Dr. Anika, the first lady of my brother Jabari. Um, family, like I said, we had a powerful um, gathering yesterday with three grandmaster teachers, young grandmaster teachers, family. We had Dr. Reggie, Eman, I mean, brother Issa, Professor Issa, and of course, Dr. Reggie. And let me give you a sample of what's to come. Let me give you a little something, tease you a little bit of what's to come. The brother started off with dealing with Africa and different continents in Africa. And they went on. And next thing you know, the, the our conversation progressed into the political, the politics. It was powerful, brothers and sisters. That's all I'm going to tell you. My Patreons will be able to visit it and see it firsthand, of course. Here's a little something, something that I want to share with you. Right after this, we're going to get into the part two of the debate with our brother, your brother, Prince York and Brother Jabari. When Donald Trump first got in office, you was siding with Donald Trump. You was rolling with Donald Trump. What is your stance and position today? I was supporting Trump, not in the sense that I was supporting Trump, but I was glad that we had to face the reality. And many of these programs that Trump is dismantling, like immigration. I want to be clear, family, that Dr. Issa, if, when he talks about his support of, of, um, of Trump, he's talking, it's rhetorical, okay? The national politics does not concern us mm. at all, right? What? It doesn't. Let me explain. It does not concern us. Yeah, I got to hear this one. I ran President Obama's campaign in Northeastern North Carolina. The New York Times did a special on me. We have these false impressions of the nature of the nation, of this country. So I was with the Obama administration until they started dismantling the historically black colleges, the federal money, the policy money. And I started to do the research. And I wrote a series of articles called How Black Colleges Are Turning White. Whatever. The black president did Obama he was very controlled he knew himself at some point he couldn't fight it it's not the Obama administration Obama was a puppet he knows it my daughter is a sophomore at an HBCU catching hell because she doesn't have the proper funding mostly because of the policies that President Obama had in his administration Donald Trump was calling for the the death penalty for five black youth who had not even been convicted although we had this black man in the image but the policies that our ancestors like Mega Evers, Dr. King, Malcolm X, uh, um, Sojourner Truth um, and so many more fought for us to win 
during the civil rights movement were dismantled. When those black men were black and Latino men right. were vindicated by DNA, he said they still should get the death penalty. Damn. I wrote articles, nobody was hearing me, but when I start writing my articles, oh, I caught hell. White House hell, and you don't want White House hell. Let me tell you, it ain't fun. Right. Many of these things that Trump is doing, President Trump is doing, a lot of them were furthered by Obama. But because we were looking at the image and dropped the ball on the policy, the policy is what it's about. Look at the policy. We get caught up with this paralysis of analysis so why, as policy why makers. Why president anyway, then? Ahead, well, that's, that's what we're talking about. Ahead, that's that's, that's, that's what we're talking about. Reggie used a uh, he, he he used a a, a, um, a Dr. Jeffries quote on me: the paralysis of analysis, <laughs> right? But I'm going to use an Amos Wilson quote: the uh, the illusion of conclusion, right? And this is the problem. The illusion of conclusion. Oh, okay. What he did was, that was the illusion of conclusion. <laughs> oh, right? Okay. It was a conclusion. <laughs> conclusion, right? <laughs> that's that's what it was. It was the illusion because it's not going to conclude. In fact, it is. So, but I would say, just to warn Dr. Issa, Ooh. right, is that you had better study how Garvey was snatched out and brought to court. You uh, better study those laws. Damn. You better see that it was the city and the state that did that to Garvey. Yeah. White so, so that's no, correct. The white so, no. so when you say so, the city and the state, let's be clear that we're talking about the white <laughs> power structure. When, so when you say Garvey, and I'm a Garvey scholar. Uh -oh, no, right? but now he's impeding in my time. So let's <laughs> let's just end this. <laughs>
conversation that I have with a group of people who do not focus on the comedic language. Please don't let Brother, Brother Javari's fast words. He's not he's ready a for me. Speaker too. He knows at just what point I might even take speech lessons from him. He's not ready for me. And he shouldn't be ready for me. He's 25. He shouldn't be ready for me. I respect what he is able to do. But don't call me out and try to have a debate. If you do that, I'm not going to come go easy on you because you're younger. This entire region, in pre-dynastic and proto-dynastic, I ain't talking about Norma. Norma's the first of the dynastic period. I'm talking about pre-dynastic period. The exact amount of time that he's been studying is barely over my actual age. And I've been studying my entire life, being the fact that I was born in Wapian. And Sainetta even had to remind Brother Jabari this. Oh, he's not ready for me. Remember Jabari? He was born. Sainetta, you said that, right? Yes, I did. Remember, he was born. So the studies I've been studying. Now, Brother Jabari is attempting to debunk. See, the reason he doesn't know history enough to actually give the best sources. Let me help him here. Once again, you do not speak any language. I, I, I said, and I said straight to Jabari, face to face. Why didn't he ask me about the coastal site? I'm going to actually help him with his debate. I spoke to him in fluent and hardic. I spoke, I spoke to him in... I, He's not I, ready I gave for me. many of terms, and I had to baby the terms down so that you heard me. He even has the nerve to say that he tried to discourse with me in the Medunetta. Family, I don't know what he was speaking. And, and that's your style of teaching. And you have to really stop insulting my style and just be comfortable with us being who we are. In Nubia, why would you be a fool? <laughs> the coastal site is earlier than dynastic, Kemet. That's what you should ask me about. <laughs> I'm a fool. Mom, why would you be a fool? He would even put together in his, in his, in his mind. And you've already called me out for a debate in March. As long as I'm in the country, I will be there. I don't know if you know what you're asking for, but... the fact that university information like is access access here, brother, brother, brother that's like me comparing my house to your house but i've never been in your house been i've certainly been well, a lot closer to nuwabian information than you've been to the university brother that's not true at all come on that's come on <laughs> so where did you study what where did you study so tell us where you which university you studied in knowledge is free and open and no, infinite no, no, so being a fact i will i will question. being a okay. fact that knowledge is free open and infinite the same things that you learn in the caucasians university which is 0.5 plus 0.5 equaling one making unity only halves coming together coming together as one that's numerology 101 being at that fact i don't <laughs> utilize i i refuse to utilize the caucasian as my reference now if it's funny then fine but all i'm saying is Take down, not you, I'm talking to anybody else. All I'm saying is take down the red, black, and green and the big fist in the air if you're going to add hold to them as fact first. All I said is utilize sound right reasoning and look with your eyes for yourself. And then say, okay, I'm going to go. Because university I, information I is accessible. You do see that as what he was talking about. Do you see it as He's making, he first of all, let me say this. I mean, first of all, let me say this. And where is that Why from? did oh, Prince oh, York can you fix this? just assume, put it onto a, put it it's on, no, don't look up here. Look here. But there's no mouse on this one. Yes, sir. But yeah. I don't see it. University. Why did Prince York assume that the university meant that you were dealing with the European? I have an Africana Studies degree. My chief scholars were Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, James Turner. So I don't know why he just assumed right away that he said he knew more than the university and then said that that means you have to be beholden to the European. I was taking the European to task at the university because I was getting information from our greatest scholars who were at my university, Cornell University. But what I'm saying to Dear Prince, and I want him to hear this clearly, is you cannot make a comparison between the university and what you learn in the community unless you've been in both settings. And I'm going to tell you that I teach in the hood. Mm -hmm. You see where we are, family. We across the street from the projects. This is who I am. But you better understand that I have done with the best. I have fenced with the best individuals in the university setting. But don't think that just because I have a, 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 um, a two degrees from Europeans, two degrees from university means I got them from Europeans. You're, you got to be clear that that's not what that means. That's not what that means.
And so what I think that sometimes, family, what we do is we give the European too much credit. Oh we give them too much credit. Why would you think when I say university that means European? Was it not the African that built the greatest universities of Europe? Bring it up. So Bring why it up. would you make that assumption? We have to stop doing that. We have to stop thinking that science is there, so we're not going to do science. We're going to do our own stuff. We have to assume that when they come out with their studies, we have to ignore everything because the European came forward with it. What you have to do is you have to analyze their data because if the data is properly gathered, it has no color. It has no, no, no nationality. You can analyze their data and come with different arguments, family. We can't just discard everything that, that European sources come out with. What you do is you analyze it. You tear it apart and figure out whether what they're saying is, is correct or not. By the way, I'm going to also tell you something else. There were a number of Tom Hu, of European scholars, that were analyzing their information truthfully that came to a very clear understanding. Wait, I'll do it. A very clear understanding of the fact that Africans gave civilization to the world. If you're confused about that, read the works of um, C.F. Volney. Read his massive work. If you want to understand where civilization comes from, even when you read Budge, you hear him begin to say that European scholars, if you read uh, Os what he calls Os the Osiris Resurrection, Volume 1, he says that European scholars will not understand Kemet because they don't study the rest of Africa. That's what he says. So when you look at what the European says, you can't assume that everything that they say is incorrect. Now, I'm not saying that I believe everything they say is correct. That would be crazy, because we know that many Europeans despise us. We know that they are seeking to, in some instances, and this is the truth, family, become us. Jabari, where is that from? Now, I want to be clear that what you're seeing is you're seeing a bobo mask. It comes mostly from Mali. And of course, Prince York is saying, look at this mask and then look at the, the, the um, Heru Behudet. And he's saying, are there not similarities? Family, th you are in the shrine of Ma'at. I wouldn't have put them there if I didn't think there were similarities. But does that mean that their languages have similarities? Not necessarily. Let's not make overly simplistic arguments. If we are scholars, we have to put our information to the task. That's what you must do. Simply because some of their ideas are the same doesn't mean their languages are the same. Simply because their languages are the same doesn't mean their, their uh, ideas are the same. You better understand that. Let's be really, no, I got this here, brother. I have not been to Mali yet. Hopefully I will have, family, you're going to know when I go to Mali because you know I'm going to have lots of footage and I may even get our dear brother Sarnetta to get over his problem with planes and start traveling with a brother because when, when Sarnetta gets to Kemet and goes through those sources, he, you're not going to even recognize him anymore because this brother is primed for this information. He has been learning this information and distributing it to our people longer than most of you have been alive. So you better understand if he goes and he sees it, I'm gonna have to tell him, Sa, it's time to go to sleep. No, I can't, I can't, I'm getting information on my people. He's gonna be bouncing and flying. So you gotta push him too, family. Push our brother Sarnetta because I know that this is the information that he wants. He's he's been in, in this information longer than most of the people that I take to Kemet. He knows more information than a lot of people I take to Kemet. So you imagine what he would do with it. So don't let him get away. Push him when you see him on the chat room. Push him, say, Sarnetta, when you go into Kemet. Because he's going to love it. He knows he is. If I have to knock him out like B.A. Baracus on the plane, we'll do that. Put, some, put some, some Percocet in his milk, right? You know what I mean? Put something in his milk. But he has to travel. It, listen, you get used to the travel. But I'm going to tell you, I still don't like the long flights. And Prince York is saying he sleeps. Most of us sleep when we go. Because you know what I do? I'm usually so busy before I travel. I'm, travel, I'm so tired by the time I get on the plane that I say, man, I can't, I'm so excited to get to Kemet. And I'm out cold. And I sleep for a good, I usually sleep in about two to three hour clips, right? So I don't sleep the whole time. I wake up, maybe I watch a movie and laugh a little bit. I read a little bit. I prepare my lectures. I go back to sleep. I eat some food. I go back to sleep. And when he comes with us, he's going to be with family. So that's another aspect of it, right? He's going to be with people who are interested, people who are looking out for you, so you'll be able to be comfortable doing it. I know that's how I feel when I travel with my queen, because she's sitting right next to me. If I'm sleeping, I could do whatever I want. I could, my head could be dancing around, and she's going to make sure I'm okay. When you, when you go with family, it's also another element of it, because you know that you could truly be relaxed, even though you're not necessarily in the most relaxing, relaxing setting, because there are people that have your, your back. So that's, that's what we got to do.
We're going to do it. You. You're going to be fine. You Listen, I have... Yeah, well... See yes and no. Yes and no. Because because the reality is when you get to Kemet, it's seven hours ahead in terms of the uh, of the, the oh, so time frame. Like a little of uh, like uh, uh, like you're going through a uh, you're past the shade, yeah. The thing that's bizarre wow. is that we usually leave at around what is it, around six? Uh huh. And we get there at like eleven o'clock in the morning. So it's like, it's like So the thing that's hard sometimes is that you go you get on the plane when it's light and you get off the plane and it's light and you've been traveling for ten hours. And right. we usually take it easy on you the what first day. Like when you go but through the dog, it's like going through a shade. Well here's the deal. You know why you don't see that? You you he's saying do you go through the, the dark. Yes you do. But here's the deal. After you eat when you get on the plane, first thing they do is they feed you. Really, maybe like a half hour, 45 minutes, and you're eating. After that, you could get drinks if you want, yeah. After that, what do they do? They close the shades. So I don't see when we travel through dark, because they close the shades, because they're like, look, you need to sleep. And so you sleep. You're not going to deal with the fact that the sun is there. You know, you get used to it. I'm making two trips to Kemet this year. I'm going to be in Kemet. Family, you can come this with year. me if you like this year. This year? I'm going to be back in Kemet wow. from November 22nd to December 5th with that, with that master Kemetic yoga master, Yusir Rahotep. So if you want to come, you can still get a seat and come with me. It's going to be an amazing trip. And if you're into Kemetic yoga or you're into other forms of yoga and you want to learn Kemetic yoga, there's going to be a 200-hour teacher training that you can partake in. So you can not only get the internal sciences, but you're also going to get the, the intellectual sciences. It's going to be powerful. So, you know, listen, this is, this is something that you can do. Family, you need every African that can should travel because you will get fundamentally aware. You'll become reconnected to what you're capable of. That's what you need to do. Yeah, I'm really tempted to go to. Well, I wanted you to hear what he said because I'm responding to what he said. But, right? <laughs> but now, now I, I, I want you to, to understand that I truly believe that we need to get to the point where we have our scholars that have as much information, as much access to resources, as much access to primary sites as the Tom who has. Mm -hmm. You will not hear me use the ca word Caucasian because I don't know if you know this. Yeah, yeah, he knows that. He knows that. Oh, it's one of the comedic oh. words. It's not your word. It's not my <laughs> it's word. It's a comedic it's word. How you say it? It's actually pronounced Tahma. And he just says Ta. It's Tahmahu. And it's a reason why, because we can break down each so the same thing. You, you could learn. say you could say Tamahu or you could say Tamahu. Okay, what is Tamahu? When I word? say Ta, I gotta go there. I don't want to go there, but he make me. He, he gonna make me have to go there. What is? You have the same way you do in English. You we break have to six, understand. We break wait, down wait, 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 wait. We're not gonna disagree on the. We're not gonna disagree on the consonants. We're disagreeing on the vowels because the comedic language does not transcribe many of its vowels. Okay. It had to have vowels because you can't speak, a, speak without vowels, but it didn't transcribe many of the vowels. So I'm not going to argue with you about Tamahu. I'm not going to argue about Tamhu because the reality is we're putting an A in there in order to say it. I just think that it's not necessary to put the A, so I don't do it. Then you wouldn't be able to say it. So that's why, no. Say Tamahu I'm talking about the, the second A. Oh, the second. So some people well, say, listen to me, hold on, wait. Top some people land. say... So it becomes a different word. That's what I'm trying, he's not a linguist, you don't get that. Of course Ta but, means land. Exactly, so when you when you don't add the prop... If I don't spell the word right in its proper format, it becomes a different word. Like when you deal with Maya. Prince. If you deal with the Prince. word Maya or Mayo, Prince. you're talking Prince. about water. Prince, Prince, you put it Prince, in, um, Prince. If you're missing a vowel... Wait, you're going on and you're, and you're not hearing... Wait, 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 wait. Before you go on... No, because if you go on, we're not... We're not disagreeing. Your arguments, you're arguing something we don't disagree. That's why you have to hear. I didn't say I didn't put the first A in. Mm -hmm. I said the second A. So yes, I did say ta. The we second. agree. Yes, the second the A. The part is ta ma mm -hmm. who. Some people say ta ma who. Some people what say some people say ta who. It what? means the people from the north is what it means. Oh, it's not a it's not a derogatory term. <laughs> it's not a derogatory term. It just describes where they came from. This is the first name for the European. Mm -hmm. You're not going to hear me use Caucasian as you did because Caucasian designates them as the original people. Yeah. You need to get my book. Ha. You do. Give me a brief. Well, just understand that in my book, 
and now I'm not going to have a copy of it right here. But understand, but you should get my book. Not because I'm saying, but listen, not because I'm trying to, to be insulting and say I'm schooling you. It's just information. So you'll get the information and you'll agree or disagree, right? So, but the reason why I'm saying to you that you should get is because there's a really good discourse on the Africans being the original people. I know you know that, but the challenge is the language that we use doesn't allow us to understand that the, the Tom who has placed this concept in our language. So Caucasian was developed by a man named what? Do you, do you, no, you, the, the, uh, understand that a, I don't want to go too far into this. Family, can this I is going to take a long time. Some, um, understand that a German up, physicist family. decided on, that he had dozens of skulls in his home and he had video. one that he thought was the most and beautiful. Share the video, right? family. Yes, I and as he saw that skull, he said, this proves that those people from Europe are the original people and all other people devolved from them. So that is why we will call these people the Caucasian, because the skull was of a woman from the base of a mount. It's in the country that we now know as Georgia. It wasn't Georgia then. But um, it's a, as a country we now know as Georgia. And so what he said was, this means that we He's should call, guy, yeah. listen to what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. This means that we should call, I have two others, I'll get them downstairs. Mm -hmm. We should call the European the Caucasian because they are the prime people. The reality is that the European does not come from that area. Area. The mm. European is from Africa just like everybody else. Mm. They've just been off Did in a distant that? land a little no, bit further. They've been in a land so a little bit further, and their phenotype changed. Oh. And because they did not have oh. access to the elders of the world, because they didn't have access to the elders of the world, and they were fighting each other for resources, their ideology changed drastically. It changed drastically. How do you say this? We even, mean? if you look at, if you look at the the, the actual archaeological you record, the you'll actually see. If you look at oh, the man. archaeological record, oh, you have to listen. I thought you were talking about discipline. I am oh, talking about discipline. But you have to listen I've heard because it. if you're going to disagree with me, you have to hear my argument. I've heard it. You've been saying it the whole time. You've I have never said this today. Yes, you know, I have never said you this told today. Me that you do not refer to the Caucasian. I did. I just said that today. But I'm explaining to you why. I didn't explain to you why before. You have. I didn't explain to you why you have before. My attention, but I'll tell you. Okay. This. You, have my you could disagree. You, you have my attention, but you're losing my patience when you start saying hypocrisy. I really thought. I really thought that in your school you learned mm -hmm. discipline we and do. patience. We do. And you challenged me. No, you, said, you said, you said, you said, you said, you said, you said, that's a difference. If you were really a student, you'd be listening right now. We should all be teachers and students. We should all be teachers and students. I am a, I am a student in many instances. I'm a teacher. Let's give him his ISO. I have been, I have been, this is, this is, this is, this is immature. That's immature. That's immature. This is immature. I am telling you a story. This is immature. Prince York, just listen. You could disagree, but you have to listen. I'm listening, but I'm ISO. Okay. Okay. Because you want to build, so I'm going to let you go. So anyway. So anyway, family. You saw this family. I mean, I listen. 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 Now he wants to say, then he wants to say that the white man is God. We have to understand that even when you do genetic studies, you'll actually see that all people on the planet come from one source. All people on the planet actually come from one African woman. One African woman. Because those Europeans that began to describe this reality were beholden to the Abrahamic traditions, Prince York doesn't realize it, but so is he. But uh, honestly, because they're beholden to the Abrahamic traditions, they called her the mitochondrial Eve. I would never call her that because Eve is not in my sacred text. So, but understand that everyone on the planet comes from Africa. They were away from us for distant periods of time, and because they were away from us, their phenotype changed, the way they look changed. And honestly, in some instances, their cultural, and, uh, their cultural mores, their cultural understanding, and even their ability to have right relationships between people changed as well, because they were away from the cradle of civilization. If you take a child away from its mother early, and they don't have access to the, the knowledge of elders, they'll likely go the wrong way. So what we need to do is recognize that we are the elders of civilization. And we have to come into knowledge of self, not just for the African, not just because the African is catching hell, but I know some of you aren't ready to hear this, but listen to me for a second. We have to come into knowledge of ourselves because we have to save all of humanity. 
not just Africans. Because the youngest people on the world are actually destroying the entire earth. We have a Korean ruler and a false ruler. I, I can't even call him president. I'm going to call him. You walked away, so now I have the screen. If you want to come back, I'll, I'll integrate you. So if you actually look at the false ruler, who I call 45, I'm not going to call him president. If you see the false ruler here, and this Korean man arguing over the world, they could actually destroy all of humanity with their arguments. The elder has to reassert themselves with the most sacred knowledge. And as we do that, then we will put the world in its right place. All right, Brother Prince, um, I want to ask you, being that you are so in disagreement with Jabari as far as where the white race come from and who are they, I'm asking you, my brother. Come on over here. I'm on my ISO. Where do they come from? The ISO? What is that? That means I get to solo explain something without his interruptions. <laughs> the way he just did. Move, I let, interrupt you. You asked me a question, I answered it. Can I get an ISO? Am I allowed to do that? I'm just asking you. He just want to ask without you interrupting. This is really immature. Can I? I just want to ISO. This is really immature. Why am I he not allowed to ISO? He came here for a dialogue. And you know what, family? He came here for a dialogue, and let's be really clear. We were having a dialogue. He walked away because he disrespected me. But I won't allow him to disrespect me because my chief purpose is to assist you, family, at home. That's why I'm here. So I allowed him to be disrespectful because I said, he'll come into knowledge of self. He's still a young man. He's going he's gonna to get it together. And I will allow him to do that because when I was his age, I might have done the same thing. But now as a man of nearly 46, I recognize that even when I disagree with someone, I have to hear their ideas. And so he didn't even listen. He wanted to just walk away and say, I'm going to let you have ISO. I, I, I wasn't trying. I, was, I had no idea what he was talking about. I wasn't, trying to, I wasn't trying to talk to you at home, family. I was trying to talk to him, but he walked away. So now he's, argue, he's upset with me because I won't let him talk by himself. <laughs> this was supposed to be a discussion. What is going on? It was supposed to be a discussion. So I have no problem with him sharing ideas. I, want, I asked him to come here so I could hear his ideas. And family, he said this in the beginning, and I didn't get a chance to agree. 85% of all that we say is, I agree with. There's a lot that he said upstairs. He thought he was disagreeing with me, and I was trying to tell him, I agree with you. There's a lot that we agree on. And I knew that, because just as he's watched my videos, I've watched his. I wanted to talk to him about things that I did not understand, and I also wanted to give his movement credit for some of what it's done. Because I know as someone who is building a spiritual community, I look at several spiritual communities and I say, these are some things that these communities have done well. I only hope I'm, old, I'm able to emulate some of those things. I can't take away from his father or from the people in his movement that they built an autonomous society down um, in, in Georgia. How could I, why would I want to take that away? I give his father honor for doing that. And if he was here, I would give him honor for doing that. And I give his son honor for the work that his father did. I'm not, I wasn't here to tear him down, but there's some things we're going to disagree on, and we'll talk about those things we disagree on, and even talk about things we agree on. So I'm hoping that he will re-engage so we can have a conversation. I'm going to give him the mic, and I'm going to let him say what he has to say. I, why would I not do that? This, I asked him here for a conversation. I didn't ask him here. I could have asked Sada to come over so I could talk to you at home, alone, family. He would have done that. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to have a conversation with this young brother because he has a lot of great information. And I'm going to tell you that if I was his age, I might not have had as much information as he did. I respect that he has done a lot of study and a lot of work and that he's really, he's, he's an articulate brother. I respect that about him. So I'm, I'm going to give him the microphone and allow him to share his ideas. Because I want to hear his ideas. And with the, the conversation we had about being students and teachers, I'm both a teacher and a student. I'm, never, I'm not just a teacher. There are no masters of this knowledge. In order to be a master of comedic knowledge, you had to study in the temple for at least 42 years. So I'm not saying that I'm the master. I never said I was a master. I said I'm a high priest. But being a high priest doesn't mean I'm a master. It means I have a greater responsibility to those people that are with me. That's what it means. So please, could you please reintegrate sure. and have this conversation? Thank you. A lot of things was misconstrued based on the fact that he's on the camera by himself. So, you know, we create. I didn't want to be on the camera by myself. We, we, <laughs> great. He, you know, we create, you know, different things. You know, he's allowed to be on the platform, et cetera. But that's great. You know, 
I, you, know, it's, you know, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. You know, I don't, I don't want anything to be misconstrued by the people. People get a misunderstanding based on how we as New Wapians carry ourselves. Being the fact that everybody in the community has come out of the New Wapian Nation. I'm, this off. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to disrespect Where you. Where did you think get the white that. man come from? Well, for, okay, I'm, I'm definitely going to get that side, but first I have to address the first topics. What I'm going to do is that at this point, at this, at this point of the video, because things are getting uh, what I would term as out of, out of discipline, out of self-discipline. And me, myself, I do admit myself as a student, a student of the Supreme Grand Master teacher. And being a student, I understand that my, my personal responsibility and faults. And I would hate to misrepresent. So when I begin to lose my patience, I'll exit that part of the conversation. As far as the language and the different translations, everything I said is, 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 is still fact. It still remains fact. He's agreed on me with 50% on it and disagree. I, can, I don't have a problem agreeing to disagree. He studies Kemet. I study pre, pre and proto-dynastic Egypt. I deal, that means I deal more so with ancient Nubia, pre-dynastic Nubia, etc. And, and those dark-skinned, woolly-haired people. I do not include the Caucasian in my science whatsoever. In my science, I say, and this is what I, and this is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what, because I'm basing off of science as well. Once again, the Caucasian has dictated all of the world's knowledge. The Caucasian is not the same as us, does not come from our descent whatsoever. The, the Caucasian doesn't even really have skin to a certain extent. It's so, and it's not even out of race or race hate. It's out of genetic uh, uh, studies. If you study his genealogy, we come from two different original blood types, where the Caucasian comes from the RH negative by nature. And if you study the correlation and the mixing of those blood types, if you insert RH negative blood type into an O positive, you would literally go into a, a, a freaking, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, not a heart attack, uh, um, a cardiac arrest from the reaction, the chemical reaction of the mix. The we have something known as melanin that's found in the echodermis layer of us. Ep and at, epidermis, epidermis. At the, he's a, that's why I wanted him over there, so I could just speak. Hey, oh, he's just correcting. But, he's not, but who is he to do that? Let me allow me to speak okay. and speak in my accent in the way I say things ahead, and be me. I, I apologize. There has to be a level of individuality. His go style ahead, of teaching versus mine. Go ahead. Not that you haven't done that to me as well. Exactly. So then how are you now so upset that I'm doing it? I'm not upset at all. Please yeah. don't misconstrue it. I'm not upset. I'm simply asking for an ISO. Okay. That's all I've asked for. I'm asking for isolation where, whereas I can speak, build to the people so therefore your, your thoughts and ideology doesn't overpower mine and the people get a confusion of what I'm talking about based on your you, misconception of what I'm saying. So I asked that, you to you give said, me an ISO the with a presentation this, so therefore I can show them what I've said. the very beginning of this that you were upset that I was dictating questions to you and that I, you should be able to have questions. See I was still I'm not able and to And so what you've done now is you so, decided that I would be alone on camera. I didn't decide that. Yeah. And so now you're decide you're demanding that you should be on camera by yourself Bro. that these are all your your, uh, your this is your understanding this is not this is not the way that this conversation was supposed to occur. He said, I'm giving you an ISO. I didn't ask for an ISO. Now he's like, why won't you give me an ISO? I didn't even, I, first of all, I didn't even know what the heck an ISO was. And second of all, and second of all, and second of all, I have no problem. I have no problem. I have no problem with giving him his time. But let's be clear. Let's be clear. Let's be absolutely clear. Let's be absolutely clear. If you look at the video, family, you will see that I allowed Brother York to speak Prince, Prince, Prince York. I'm not trying to disrespect you. If you want me to call you Prince York, I say that. Don't, call me, don't ever call me by my last name. That is the most disrespectful term. Well, I'm not aware of that. So if you tell me what you want me to call you, name, your last name is your name as well. No, you call people, uh, bro, come on now, son. So what do you want me to call you? What do you want me to call? I'm not trying to disrespect you. What I'm, I'm, I'm asking him what he wants to be called. I have no problem with what. This is what we came down here for was so I could... Iso get isolation. Presentation ain't we didn't say isolation. We never said anything about. If you I'm just able, said that. So if I'm able to present. If I'm able to present something, you're gonna interrupt me while I'm presenting it. I'm trying to present it to you so you can get the full scope, and then I can shut up and sit down, and then you can go and say, "Now let me tell y'all, family, blah, blah blah blah." And to me, that would be the most organized. Well, way to do well, it. listen. Rather than you let, cutting let, you off, let me, me cutting you off. Let me, the let me, let me. People miss the point. Let, so let, able to talk right now. Let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Brother York and I have agreed on a format. It was supposed to be a dialogue. I came down here. I, I came to. Upstairs, we said it was going to be a dialogue. Watch the fa the video, family. No, this no. is this is not. Just watch the video. He's asking you to, to ignore your lying eyes and, and ignore your ears. So we agreed you, on the beginning. Over the picture. Don't look at the walls, family. No. Go by with the university, and I got this degree. That's not, I never said that. Let me make this, let me make I this never known. said that. Let me that. make this known to all the people in the Take public. Take the microphone. Let me make this known to all the people in the public. 
And I'm going to say this one time and excuse Why my... Why don't you do your ex, presentation real quick? Excuse, he can't do his presentation. I can. Get the, get the, I definitely the can. And Cynetic can zoom in on the, on the yeah. laptop and I can do a presentation. I, I, listen, listen, come on, let's do it. Like that. The way you say certain words is like that to me, being the fact I deal with proper pronunciation. But there's a difference between <laughs> netter and Prince Egyptian. Kill me, man. It's like saying, it's like to there's me. There's a difference, and I don't always say netter. I say that in the public. To me, it's I like saying to me. Inter is what I actually you say what? in my prayer. Well, you drop a lot. I say inter is what I say in my prayer. Where'd you get the, but where'd in you get the pop from? In my prayer, because the earliest no, people in that region do that? use that. Do that again to me. Inter is what oh, I say. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do that again. Now, I'm telling, no, I'm never going to say that on, on camera. Oh. <laughs> that is what I do One, two. When I'm talking to people, I use See, that, the word see, and that would be an argument. And I have me, no problem using that. Our people, most of them, most of that, that most of them, the, when you deal with like back of the throat the pops people. and air pops, etc., most of that stuff comes from West Africa, from my studies. I have not seen uh -huh. many of it. So how do you explain the the Zosa people and Mosa people doing it in Southern Africa? I'm saying I'm not. I'm so, when I'm telling, I didn't. You see, I'm saying so. I'm not familiar with them. No, I haven't finished. Uh, I'm saying when I say West Africa, I'm just generalizing. I'm saying West, meaning away from Egypt. From from what I've studied in the Nile Valley, from what I've studied in Nile Valley, from the indigenous people <laughs> who is 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 of my is of my lineage. I haven't seen. Yo, him, do you want to go through that right quick, man? No, I want to go ahead and do this presentation. Get it over. And then you're gonna here. listen to his rebuttal response. I mean, sure, but he's gonna make his response. You know, the masters right, of heaven. Right? Again, bro. Are you close enough? Listen. Let me make sure you're close enough first. Nuwapians deal with pre-dynastic Egypt, including all of its original lands by any names, whether it be Kush, Aswanu, uh, whether you're dealing with Ethiopia, which is a Greek name, yes, I'm just using the term, or Nuba, Nubia, etc., and many other places, right? We mainly focus our attention on that connects us as Nuwapians in, 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 in the history. We focus on, one of the main cities we focus on is Napata, or Napata. And Napata has been expressed in the Metal Netta hieroglyph as NPT, being the fact that there is no vowels, it creates an interchangeable sequence. As so Prince Napata can also be written as Napata, Nuputu, you know, Nepeti, saying Nipeti, one or Napoto. Word. Also Watch can be seen in other words mic. such as Heru, Horu, Haru, and Hiru, Anubu, Anaba, Anabi, Anabi, and Anubu can all be similar dealing based on the interchangeable sequence of language. Other letters are interchangeable. Other letters that are interchangeable are B and a P, the M and the N, the B, R, L, the C, G, G, H, the K and the G, the S, H, the P, F, the K, H, the A, E, I, O, and U. The reason why this interchangeable process happens in the language is because we're translating one, first and foremost, we're translating one language uh, that has a larger amount of letters, consonants and vowels, well, no vowels, but a larger amount of consonants mainly, and we're, uh, we're forcing it into a language that has only 26. And in that compilation, we're going to have a double up on words. So if you see in my diagram here, I'm going to expand it for the purpose of the conversation. If you see in my diagram here of the Medunetta, you're able to see where it says Y, it has OR. Where it says E, it has OR. Where it has C, it says OR. And this is just one diagram. And the reason why you're able to see those ors is because there's more letters but they don't include them they just say this word or this letter has more than one sound the way they teach you in 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 English that's the same that's English science or English literary science is forced upon you here in America so where you say a makes the sound of a or a makes the sound of a instead of saying that in in uh, pre-semitic language what you would do is you would say you have a hard a which is usually if you was to write it in English would be an a with a dot above it and then you would say you have a soft or a so the hard a would be a, I mean a, and the softer a would be a, and those would be two different vowels. When you shove them together, it creates an interchangeable sequence because now different dialects are now able to pronounce it in numerous of ways based on their own dialect of their language. So it, it, it's, it's language is something great to study, and I recommend it for all of our um, all of our young and old scientists out there who, who who's interested in the science of, of linguistics. Let's go further. Um, here, you have n another civilization that Nuwapians hold to as um, one of our civilizations where our direct people came out of. This civilization is, is, is called in Arabic, Nakada or Nakada, and it's another pre-dynastic city, uh, and it's actually not far from the ancient city of Napata. Nakada in Arabic terms as critics or judges. The Meruneta 
uh, the Merunetic Harafat, Harafat is a Nuwapic word for letters. The Merunetic Harafat translation is, is NBW or NWB, which creates a noob kind of sound. Once again, applying the same interchangeable up, family, sequence so of the vowels, noob, NWB, becomes Nuwapu, so or commonly known as Nuwapu or Nuwapu. Other video, culture, family, let's go. our culture, and our, which is our culture and our spiritual way of life. So Nuwapu or Nuwapu is our cultural way of life and also is termed as the name of us. So to so say the word Nuwapian in our language would be Nuwabu or Nuwapu. When you add the U at the end, it makes a plural. It adds like a plural, almost like Hebrew, where Hebrew is I'm, which is why I am. Uh, also dealing with uh, English, English may add an S to, to make something more than one. Whereas in our language, it would be a U. Do it really now, hurt these family people just to thumb were up known the video? to modern historians it? as Nuba on, Egyptians. Family, it Nubans, Do it really Nuba, hurt that or the Noba the people you, in pre dynastic history, they are said to be nomadic people, but in fact. But in, but in fact, they were great migrators. Greek historians termed them that way because of their lack of understanding of pre-proto-dynastic history. Yet, these people are also Napa or Naba, meaning people, uh, people out of Napata and the, and the Nakata regions of the Nile Valley. Nuwapians. These are our ancestors. As you now see... We Nuwapians always are ahead in information because our Nabab master has been able to study and travel Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Morocco, Israel, Ghana, Egypt, etc. He has sat, as you can see in the pictures here, he has sat with many elders from many different walks of life, right? And, 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 uh, Wait. He has sat with many elders on his travels, not just tours for tourists and quote unquote what they want you to know or what you're allowed to see. Because remember, Egypt is the republic, the Arabian Republic it is controlled by Arabs, is dictated by Arabs who we say is not the pre-dynastic Egyptians. We say we are the Africans, the African-Americans. We are those original Egyptians or Kemetic people. Now, moving forward. But amongst the indigenous tribes is where he studied and speak with their elders He's and their shamans. He was even inducted in many of their tribes and have his tribal scars. My father's chest looks like it's been covered in tattoos based on tribal scars and tribal marking of his induction and initiation into these different tribes. And the indigenous tribes of the region actually allowed the master teacher, Panababi Anun, to be a translator from them conversing with one another. Let's go further. Uh, the original dialects of Arabic, Soraic, Ashur, and, uh, and Aramic, allowing him to ask the necessary questions from mouth to ear to elders. The pass this knowledge on because of their anger with the Arabs that had conquered their lands and built an Aswan Dam in 1964, a few years later. I mean, a few, yeah, a few years later. Therefore, flooding numerous of ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemetic sites, including the great temple of Abu Simbel. And from then on, begin changing Egyptian appearances on the wall. And as you can see on the picture, you see Caucasians in the, in, in the temples actually altering the color of the skin of the people and the Egyptians on the wall, meaning this university style affirmation that we're getting is being altered as we're studying it. And these people, if y'all want a reference for this photo, these people are actually coming from the University of Chicago. And this picture was taken in the 90, in the early 90s, and they're actually altering, I wish the picture was in color so you could see it, they're actually altering the skin complexion of the Egyptians. They're, they're shaving off the red and the dark brown and the black, and they're replacing it with white and peach. And this is why I say, let's not base all our knowledge on what the Caucasian says, because the white man has shown us not he's the devil in a spiritual aspect and kill him I'm saying he's shown us his attributes he does not have a place in history he do not he does not have a history of his own his beginning starts in the Caucasus Mountains in northern Europe in Scandinavia where it was three different tribes and those three tribes mixed together and became six different kingdoms the three tribes were the Celtics Celtics and the Danes and when they mixed together those six kingdoms came together and six in Roman numerals is VI that's how it's expressed six kings becomes VI kings Kings, and the VI Kings is their first real culture, which was the Vikings, barbaric. Thus, the word Neanderthal is birthed from the word Netherlands. And all this is taking place in northern Scandinavia at the same geographic location as the Caucasus Mountains. They're all in the same region. These are their origins. 
Caucasians are not of African descent. They are of an entire different, uh, uh, more than ethnicity, but we even say in some cases a different species. And whereas their exact creation in some cases are unknown, many facts are proven that they did not migrate from any parts of Africa, that they were already there. And, and, you, can, and you can study this as far as the science of melanin, the science of their blood and their DNA, even their body structure. Caucasians are normally... No, we're almost there. Caucasians are normally built. Caucasians are normally built more uh, taller than mo most Africans, with very large calf muscles, sharp jaw lines. You have to study the features of different people, where and very slim noses, etc. Different color eyes. If anyone is to tell you that an African with a big nose, big lips, big uh, big brown eyes, and in some cases, when you go to Africa, the, even the real Africans, the whiter their eyes have actually gotten darker because of the amount of melanin. Their nails is darker because of the amount of melanin. So let, me if you, well, let me just finish this point. So if you're going to tell me that someone moved into a colder climate and they nose shrunk, they lips shrunk, they eyes shrunk, their, uh, uh, their skin began to begin a discoloration, then you would be more in favor of the biblical story of the disease of lepers. But I'm going to allow Sineta to ask me his question. First, um, because of that last statement you just were saying, um, let's say you had your arm in a cast, in a cast uh -huh. right? The cast is on your arm for a period of, let's say, eight months to a year when you take yeah when you take that cast off your arm how would your arm be looking your arm your physical arm yes would have changed and in some cases it might even have shrunk people who have broken how would it look go ahead you I'm, 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 I'm building it. Go ahead. Pe people who have broken their legs when their legs are broken for uh, uh, and they arm begin to get lighter as well right because it's not being in the sun yes go ahead I wouldn't necessarily well, let say me, that let me tell you you will notice that your arm will become very hairy. Your arm will also be sweating a lot because it's like in a cave, so to speak. Right? And it will be get it gets lighter. The same thing that happened with the European, because he lived in the cave. He began to be sweaty, hair grows all over his body, he gets lighter. Yo, so if the that's not the case in the, if the white earth. man didn't come out of Africa, come on, man. You are saying Stop that it was like two creations. Out. Over First, there was a creation of the, the black man and woman, theory. and then later on, out. there was another creation somewhere where in Europe and where. Talk to me about that. Um, I I would deal with more so dealing with the Caucasian. I would say how that how did they get here? I would. I'm not gonna necessarily go because it'd be a it'll be that go into that probably be a whole nother video. It's all right. Just yeah. tell me how but, did they get here, brother. But, in short, lamest terms. But um, what I would say is I would say this: the Caucasians are definitely not Africans at all, right. as well as and I'm not saying there's two creations because one we as Nwapians don't necessarily deal with an official creation because we're not ex uh, dealing with the religious aspects that come with it. What we would say is we we deal with a term of existence of time period of people and I guess some people would term that as evolution but we're not saying in the same way that they do we're more so saying that Africans have always exist across the planet humanoids have always exist across the planet and um, and during times of uh, plate tectonics and polar shifting etc through different regions we all migrated into the greatest landmass the safest landmass on the planet earth which is uh, as we term uh, is is a uh, tamare or the entire continent of Africa today uh, many people are going to argue and say, oh, Africanist, I'm just giving you the term, so therefore everybody who can understand. I'm not. Well, what I'm asking you is, but I'm saying not, that the white man was created I'm, was somewhere else. I'm Maybe saying, I'm saying the white, I'm, I'm saying that that teaching is a Caucasian teaching that's taught to us. So but I'm me, telling man, you, where you come from, I'm huh? telling you based on the science, based on the science of blood types, melanin, physical features. If you put your arm in a cast and the cast is in there long, your arm will become frailer. This, the, your skin, right. the skin complexion would lighten. It would right. not, and it would gain a coat of ash, right. but it would not change. When you deal with the Caucasian, they are melanin recessive. That means their body does not accept melanin. If they were Africans who were light-skinned Africans, then, they're, then they would tan, and when they tan, they would not catch skin cancer. Their skin would not begin to wrinkle. They would not begin to get boils that we don't get. We live in Africa forever, and the people there you look know. younger than forever. That you have not answered my I question. Do, yet. I and I agree with Sinetta and the people that I've not answered Sinetta's question yet because <laughs> I am saving that question for a later date because it's going to turn into a circus when I build on no. that. No, 
It will, I promise. But we want to get back to the slide. Another thing I want to mention real quick is that we, if you want more information on the stuff I'm talking about, or you want information on the Caucasian, you can order the book, the Bigfoot book. Call the number 201-878-2833 and get that at the at 428 Ocean Avenue, the Cultural Resource Center. You follow what I'm saying? Um, but we're going to get back to the slide. So here, the next thing that we have is from this, he discovered a mystery language that he was talking about is our master teacher and, and maybe someone that you study commonly uh, known as Dr. Malachi Z.K. York. Um, he discovered a mystery language in Nubia other than just hieratics. This one language and its scripts can be found in many dialects all over Africa, such as Sabaean script dialects, Gais dialects, Sub-Saharan dialects, Neo-Saharan dialects, Ethiopian script dialects. Marrying the dialects, their origin was reborn and the language of time known to this day known in this day and time we term it as Nuwapuyi family the Nuwapic the Nuwapic language yes has been updated and has been modernized to apply to us in this day and time which I'm sure the brother brother Jabari would agree that modernization of our culture is key we cannot walk around the streets of New York City in a toga we will get hit with, with indecent exposure you follow what I'm saying so we have to modernize certain things in the way that we dress etc so it's not us taking ownership of it and saying it is ours and no one else's it's us simply saying we want to live this way of life and this is how we choose to do it and identify ourselves on the planet earth because we as Africans we're suffering from an identity crisis. We do not know who we are. Most Africans are becoming Muslim and were becoming Muslim simply for the sake of culture, not even for the sake of the religion. They became Muslims because they wanted to be a part of the culture and have a, a, a what they felt was the African way of dress. They were even taught in some cases that Allah was the black God and that was our God. And from that science brought attracted us. It wasn't necessarily religion. We weren't naturally taught, uh, brought into religion. And stop. And another thing, people have to stop saying that the Egyptians were civilized. The Egyptians were not civilized. When you say the the word civilized, you're admitting that at some point you are uncivil. The Egyptians or the Kemetics are the civilizers. We taught everyone else civil. We taught everyone else how to behave. We taught everyone else hygiene because we have high genes or high genetics. It's in our genetic code. We are the teachers of the planet Earth. We've always have been. And at some point in time, us as being gods, our goodness and our kindness has been taken for weaknesses and we have now been conquered. And now we're living in a conquered society and now we have to depend on our slave master to reinform us on who we are and he's given it to us in bits and pieces. Thus, here we are over 400 years later still in the United States States of America and still in for some forms of mental bondage and some of us in physical and spiritual bondage. So we have to learn to free ourselves. I'm going to go further. If you look at the diagram here, you're able to see the Nuwapic uh, Hadafat, which is letters, the Nuwapic script. And as, if I translate this sentence for you, it says Pa. This is a P. P-A-A. -A, pa, which means the. And this is Ha. H-A. Ha. R. This is a R. A. Uh, Fat. This is a harder fat. Harder fat means letters. So this sentence says the letters. And that's the Nuwapian language. That's the Nuwapic. And if Sinet, if you look at the, the book he had, you'll see that the symbols are different because the all the uh, the printers was changing the stuff in his books and mis and misguiding people. Like people said, Doctor Yoke had no references. I have a whole build on that for you because there's the there's codes all in the back giving you references to all the books, but they removed it so we would be able to turn on our own leaders. It's divide and conquer. This is why I call the white man a devil, not because he's a devil incarnated. I'm calling him a devil because of devilishment acts. One who acts that way is what I'm gonna call you. If my if your child is being naughty, then you're gonna call them miss. You're gonna say they misbehave. You, you know what I mean? And that's not a racist thing. It's just a fact. You're misbehaving. You need to act right. You follow what I'm saying? So now, now finding our origin, we regained our culture. We Nuwapians are not take talking about it anymore. We are living each and every day, and we prove our existence in our ways, in other ways, uh, are, uh, wait, wait, we improve, we prove our existence in ways others are still dreaming about. Our own language, clothing, music, ceremonies, rituals, dances, symbols, entertainment, holidays, calendars, history, country, nationality. We have our own identity. No longer will we as African people walk around on the planet Earth with no identity or be what they call wannabes. And what is a wannabe? Wannabes is when we're studying all this different stuff and it's because we truly want to be. And it's not the fact that we're not. The world is looking at us as wannabes. And they're looking at us as wannabes. When you're a Muslim, the, the Arabs are going to look down and say, oh, he's not. 
You know what I mean? When you're a Christian, they're gonna, everybody's always looking down at Africans no matter what we try to do. Even to the point where West Africans look down at a lot of uh, Africans here in North America. And they look down at us because they feel that they're the real Africans and we're like dark white people. So what Nuwapu did for us and what I can personally attest to is it gave us a sense of identity. It gave us a culture to live in. So therefore, when I transition and I die off this planet Earth, I won't be buried in a cemetery. I won't do any of their rituals or practice. When I'm married, I don't have to go to a church or a courthouse, which is another church, and you can get that breakdown on my YouTube channel, the Prince York channel, but I'm not going to go to the courthouse, which is another church, another religious thing, and be built with masonry, you know, from the gravel that the, um, that the judge actually hits, that's all masonry. So I'm not going to go to another religious center to be uh, uh, more indoctrinated in it. Everything they say to you is a level of indoctrination. Have a blessed day. That's a form of indoctrination. Language has spells in it. The spell is in the spelling. And that's why we can't get lost in the trance of translation. We have to bridge the gap. So I'm going to go further and we're almost finished. It's our last page because the last major topic that people ask about. People are asking us about the Unctui. You see that symbol right there? Mm -hmm. That is the Unctui. The Unctui is our own symbol to represent our second resurrection, our reawakening from, from the mental and physical slavery that we've lived in in America. It is symbolic to our opening today. It, in comparison to the unk, the unk tui symbolizes, or to, in, in comparison to the unk, the unk symbolizes physical life and unity of procreation, whereas the second Z added to the unk creating the Aung Tui, uh, represents spiritual life. So each bar represents the physical life's connection to the spiritual lives. It was created for and by Nuwapians as a part of our own, own identity in this day and time. So please, and there's a lot of Nuwapian teachers and, um, and that are new teachers, and they don't have all of the affirmation. So please, stop running with what you've heard from them. Um, they're students, and they're still learning, so be patient with their misunderstandings. We've never said that the Aung Tui, the the double unk that we wear is an ancient or pre-dynastic symbol. We gladly will tell you it is our own symbol. We created it. What gave you the permission to create it? The same thing that gave me the permission to breathe. My bloodline genetics, my birthright as a pre-dynastic Egyptian, as a shit. If I go further than that, my birthright as an earthling gave me the right to create whatever I want. The, every single symbol that we accept and every single language that we accept are all created. So therefore, we also have the power to be procreators as well in this day and time. And we wanted a symbol. We still acknowledge the unk and hold to it dearly and acknowledge everything it stands for. We simply utilize the unk tui as our symbol as individualism. So we can individualize ourselves and say, look, we are a part of the entire ancient Egyptian and ancient Kemetic society and communities. But we are the Nuwapians. And this dual unk represents us waking up from sleep and waking up into some form of spirituality. This is the very, very end. Go ahead, Sai. Now to deal with the known pre-dynastic pharaohs. This is how we look at things. The, one of the, the last of the pre-dynastic empire, you were dealing with a pharaoh by the name of Ka. I'm sure the brother, Brother Jabari, with his great overstanding of the Medunetsa, will agree that Ka means... Spirit. Thank you. Great. Spirit. So we both can agree on that. Whereas uh, in the Metal Nuts translation, they only pronounce it with one A. But in actuality, it's a hard A and a soft A. It's supposed to be a Kha. It's supposed to come from the back of the throat. Kha. Proper pronunciation is important if you say that you are one who does prayers, rituals, and, and, and deal with the, the deep and depth spiritual sciences. Because if you do, then you want to be saying everything in tone. Tone, sound, and vibration is what affects people. If you say, good morning. Now the other person is going to feel you annoyed with them and now they're going to say it back in that manner. Whereas if you're the bright person that says good morning, now you've now made someone who may have been feeling bad feel differently all because of the sound vibration. So that shows you the science of speaking properly. So we have to, that's why we as Nuwapians study the language so we can say everything in its proper grammatic form. Both Meduneta and Nuwapik we adhold to. So. The pharaoh by the name of Ka is one of the last pre-dynastic pharaohs. Ka means spirit. In Egypt, you were named based on who you were, not what you accept. So, so we identify him as a spiritual being based on the title Ka. Now, the next pharaoh that, that was, now this, most of this is assumed to be because the lack of uh, uh, knowledge that the, um, that the 
Caucasian has on on the different pre-dynastic Egypt. Pre-dynastic Egypt kind of remains a mystery, and in most cases, most archaeologists and um, and those who study the science uh, uh, will either debunk the theory and say uh, however many dynasties they, that, that they choose and leave it there, starting with Pharaoh Menes or Nama. But Notice, in actuality, there is a pre-dynastic a period. Word. There are pyramids in, in Nubia, Sudan that are older notes, than the pyramids, the pyramids in, uh, um, in and commit, and we can disagree. We can agree to disagree, and all we have to do is do the facts for ourselves. So you know, learn the carbon date, and then you can prove me wrong. Other than that, then we got to refer back to the white man, the same man who enslaved us. So that makes no sense. The next pharaoh come on, come is known on, come as on. Iri Ha, Zahudi also That's known our as Ro. Zahudi now, Ma'at remember, is family, our brother. we have to break down the do language. Not Zahudi I Ma'at. has been termed as M E M M or Am. Re is really Re. Re is R Y as they pronounce it, and it's really Re because they're interchangeable of vowels, so we have to put in its proper stance. So I Re is M Re, and then Hor H O R is truly Har H A R. So I Re Hor is actually M Re Har, and you can hear the difference in the exact tone. And they forgot to put the Akit at the end of his name, and I'll explain why in a second. M Re Har Akit is the one who is said to be reincarnated in 2012's procession change to bring forth the age of Aquarius. Re means sun, Har means on high, and Akit means horizon, Hor rising, or Har rising. So he was supposed to bring forth the, the coming of the age of Aquarius because in pre-dynastic periods, the Egyptian pharaohs were in connection to the zodiac. They dealt with the Dendora star maps and the Zahuti's calendar, which is all commonly known as the lunar calendar. So with them studying astronomy to such an extent, most of them entombed themselves with the spiritual aspects and sciences of it. Let's go further. Pharaoh Scorpion, which is what they call, obviously what they call it, which we know as Selk or Selket, the one who, and which means the one who came, the one who caused the throat to breathe, is, a, is also, the word has also been termed as a serpent. This pharaoh ruled from Thinis, just north of Napata, and his name, title, is represented, is a representation of the zodiac sign of the Scorpio. One more, Sa. And the, 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 the oldest that I have seen in my research is the pharaoh Bull. Historians don't have much of anything on Bull, or any of these pre-dynastic pharaohs for that matter, because the pharaohs aligned themselves with the zodiac, the spiritual astronomy. The bull was the Taurus, hat horse calf, or hat horse cow. Also, when the Israelites waited, and it's been said, in script, in the scriptures, not deeming that as fact or fiction, I'm just bringing it up for, for the point of the Israelites so they can have something to talk about. When uh, it's actually said, when the Israelites was waiting on Moses to come back with the 613 commandments, it was said in the Tanakh that the people was w worshiping a golden calf. They was worshiping the Taurus, the deity. O uh, only more proves that the Israelites were in fact Egyptians. Because I teach that the Israelites were in fact Egyptians prior to um, Prior to everything. They don't have no previous history before Egypt, even though they don't want to proclaim it. The original zodiac calendar, zodiacal calendar of Egypt or Kemet was the Dehutuis calendar, also known as the lunar calendar. These calendars was based on the cycle of the equinox, solar and lunar, based on the change in direction, the change in direction, oh, based on the change in direction of the Earth's uh, of the earth due to polar shifting and other external for forces roughly 4,000 years ago and here is a graph showing you our zodiac signs are created when the earth is aligned with a certain star constellation at a certain time it alters the genetic chemistry of the infant magnetic energy affects the child's auras which creates moods and inspires a zodiac sign this is yet another shown in proof of the great connection our great connection to nature on the dendora you will see the greatest expression at the chapel of asar in hathar's temple and if y'all want to zoom in uh the family who wants to want to look at the um, 
the graph, it has all the years of each coming, and each coming of the of a different uh, era, like we're in the age of Aquarius right now, each one of those comings, what happens is it only happens every 2,160 years. And we, those who study numerology know 2 plus 1 plus 6 equals 9, and 9 is with, without beginning and without ending, which we affectionately refer to, affectionately refer to as the new principle, because new being primordial waters or being a beginning without beginning, truly. So we refer to 9 as that, and anybody wants to debate that, you do your 9 multiplications and watch how it keeps going back to nine. But that is my, let me close out. But that is my presentation for the brother Jabari to give him a very brief connection of where Nuwapians who study Wunuwapu connect into the comedic science. We identify ourselves as the ancient Napatans and the pre-dynastic Noba people who were one of the many tribes that lived inside ancient Egypt. And we take heed to that birthright and we relive our culture today. Yes, we add and modify our culture and seek to modernize it for today's overstanding and today's laws, principles, and cultural relations. But we add hold to all of our spiritual sciences, rituals, etc. We do not deal with religion. We acknowledge if you wanted to give us a term, we would take, we would adhere to the term animism, which refers to being spiritually connected and acknowledging every living thing has a spiritual connection to all ether or all life, etc. So that's what we as Nuwapians study, and we live our culture. If you want more information on this right here, you can go to 428 Ocean Avenue, Jersey, New Jersey, which is the Hall of Right Knowledge, Prince York's personal cultural resource center, as well as you can call the number 201-878-2833 and order books, etc. We even put together a starter pack which I personally am going to give to my brother Jabari for free. A hundred dollar starter pack which mm. is nine Nuwapian books titled Actual Facts dealing and I will make sure I will hand pick them to ensure that they are on the necessary topics to grasp his overstanding. And hopefully he, we can come to a, a gradual conclusion on that. But everybody else you are able to order by calling the number 201-878-2833 order the starter pack which is nine actual facts for one hundred dollars and what it is able to do is give you a great overview for people who want to debate us and pe for people who want to debate us as well as people who want to learn from us and see what Wunuwapu is all about. But now I'm going to pass it over to my brother Sarnetta and then we'll go on to brother Jabari. All right brother um you talked about um Haramaket I don't know if you pronounced it that way uh Rehar Aket yes. Rehar Aket is that the same as Heru mm -hmm. Heru on the horizon? Yes. So you said it was something else. No I agree with you. Rehar Akit is Haru on the horizon, okay. yes. Okay. But I'm talking about as far as the zodiac is, it's, it's symbolic. The time period is in is symbolic to the coming of the Aquarius. And when you get to study a lot of ancient scripts, you'll see that they talk about, in the, in the studies of the Dendora, they talk about each coming and each year dealing with that calendar. So every 2,160 years, we revert to a different age. Whereas now, after the year 2012, which this is why the Caucasian deemed 2012 as the end of the world, because his lack of understanding of procession change Changes, solar astronomy, etc. We as Nuwapians, we study all of that. So that's why we're able to give you such a great overview. But Rehar Akit is utilized as a main principle for, uh, for the coming of the age of Aquarius, which we're living in today. All right, sidebar. Um, I dropped my phone about 50 times or 100 times since I had it. Brother, you got to get yourself an Autobot. <laughs> yeah, you get yourself. I always tell you that, man. Because you know, you? you said get the computer printer. Right, right. But just phone sad be part, cracked and broken Prince, up. Prince I mean, your phone save your phone, man. Oh, he save your it phone. About times, well, you man. ain't got to go through all of that. No, so I think it'd be a good idea Prince if you personally brother. came and interviewed my father's older brother. I would love that. At his palace, because that shit is a palace. That boy's house is a palace. Well, At his is, palace. Which one is in the hospital? Your uncle? Yes, yeah, my oldest, my father's older brother. Baba Haru know him very well. He said yeah. he want to go and visit him. Yeah, he's like, yeah, that's family. He can yeah. talk, he can... Yeah, he's, he's alive. <laughs> right, you know because I don't know what he's in the hospital. No, he's getting a surgery on his hip, that's all. Oh, okay. But he's, yeah, he's well yeah, in his... Make sure you tell him Baba asked about him. Yeah, I will, of course. I'm not going to forget. You're going to see him probably open up to you, too. Say, oh, man, yes. Well, my uncle always told me his close relations um, with... Um, my uncle had a lot of very close relations with Dr. Ben Yosef. And actually, my uncle was... 
thinking about coming forth. I told we him just not to talking, for the sake of his own integrity, uh, you know, because there's demons in this community, up. and he's a so very talking, old elder. Talk, but um, he was thinking about coming forth to the misconstructions and the lies that was told on my father, as far as saying my father had a problem with Dr. Ben, etc. Did my father call Dr. Ben uh, insulting names before? Yes. But we as, as we as teachers and scholars, yes, we lose our temper from time to time. We discuss different things. At the end of the day, we are brothers. And my father actually made over four videos and put Dr. Ben in books. And his Dr. Ben's face is actually on a six-foot golden frame picture in our grand parole right there in Brooklyn, 717 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. So my father did not have any initial issues with Dr. Ben. It was simply disagreements on different studies, as obviously when we're both studying different eras of time, etc., whatever we're studying. And my father said, hey, and, and he gave uh, an insult, which happens. Brother Jabari and I, we we then got hopefully Sidetta cuts it out for the integrity integrity of the video. Yeah, but no, I, but I already had that in my mind. The disagreements. He wanted me to cut it out. Okay, the, the disagreements. <laughs> he yeah, just, me to cut out was, uh, all the stuff going back and forth. Not, not the disagreements, but when y'all was getting a little like down here. And yeah, for the for the integrity of the video, but you know what I mean. But whenever Brother Jabari is ready, I'll just allow Sidetta to question me on what I presented. All right. Um, Sidetta probably has more questions. I, you still you getting ready, Jabari? Uh, yeah, now see, I don't have a full presentation. Yeah, no, I don't want it to be full because I'm going to What I want to know is, brother, why sometimes, you know, we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Why you don't just say, well, brother, son, that I'll get back to you on that. I don't know offhand as far as I'm saying. Because once you put the claim out that the white man don't come from Africa, he was already there. I'm saying, how did he get there? Who created him if he was created? Where did he come from? You got to be able to drop that information, brother. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's all right to say, well, you know, so I'm going to have to do more research on that. I'll get back to it because we don't we don't know everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think the creation of the white man is such an in-depth conversation that its intellectual science will be lost in basic conversation. Try. So Try. I would give it to us. So I would feel as though best on a, on a, scholar, on a scholarship level that I'm able to put together a full presentation and okay. air it only exclusively on Sa Neta TV, Black News 102. Right. Yeah, much love. But I'm able to air it exclusively on Sa Neta TV because it's so much information. And uh, otherwise, if if I, I'm and this is and this is just my personal feeling. If I begin to express that science, many people, because of their n lack of knowledge on the topic and their lack of knowledge in... in, in they're going to say you pseudo. They're going to call me pseudo before looking it up. <laughs> See, call me pseudo. That's fine. I don't really care about the word. It's, uh, uh, you know, people like this word, obviously. But I know a lot of people say pseudo out of context. They say pseudo when, when you know what I mean, we're talking about something as simple as you can literally Google and the f Wikipedia give you the Shout right answer. And they'll say it's pseudo. Like me neither. I feel like... That's my brother well, I, on the I feel other like side, y'all. It shuts conversation down. Shout yes. out to Black. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like nothing should Make be deemed sure pseudo until to proven that, that it does not exist. So, thing. for example, if and I'm going to say this. I know Sinead are going to get me, but I'm going <laughs> to say this. For example, I'm not going to say extraterrestrials exist or don't exist. But I'm going to say being of the fact that there, there stands to reason that people all over the world have had unconnect, no connection amongst these people, have talked about witnessing and having experience with the same looking beings, etc. I will leave it room for question whether they do exist or don't exist. If you scream pseudo, then that's you. But at right. the end of the day, that doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It simply means that I stand to reason. I will give the room for reason and to, to, to for someone to bring forth eligible, eligible facts. I'm not going right, to say, say this. aliens. Now, you said um, in your presentation that we always been here. I agree, but I don't think you understand or know how to really break that down. Mm -hmm. When you say we always been here, but you know the concept. are you saying that we've been here before the crocodiles, brother? Because the crocodiles are way older than human beings. Mm -hmm. And do you believe in um um what's that the word I'm looking for? The uh ah oh, man, them big creatures. No, the big creatures. Dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Do you believe? Do you believe in dinosaurs? That was they in existence at one point in time? Okay, I'll put it this way. I stand to reason, being the fact that because I, I, I don't have the capability of proving whether the dinosaur bones are authentic or not, and I would hate to mislead the masses and the people who choose to say the dinosaurs don't exist because I have to study their argument. But my entire life. 
I've always took heed to the fact that dinosaurs existed. And the only point of reference that I could direct people to is the ancient Mayans have actually, they actually found some, I, I believe they were over, I believe it was over uh, five to 6,000 years old. Uh, uh, they had big, uh, smooth black stones where they actually encarved the ancient Mayans and riding the, uh, riding different dinosaurs that are herbivores, obviously, but different dinosaurs. And it's not in America control. It's actually in most of Brazil in South America's control, so I can't just say, okay, the white man, even though those people are of lighter descent, I can't say based on America's society of controlling information, I don't know. So I will stand the reason that I don't know. And as I said earlier, Prince York, you never really say I'll get back to you. Most of the things that you ask me, and to be Alan honest, Davis, is quite elementary. On, Captain, if you right, wanted me to out, say, man. if you're trying to get, or if people say, well, what does, what does Prince York not know? I mentioned to the brother earlier, I've been personally studying, trying to find the source of oldest word for Ethiopia. Being the fact I don't like using the word Ethiopia, I'm looking for the source and the oldest. But I found numerous of words used by numerous of people. So that's things that I don't know. And things that I don't know, I, I'm a person who dedicates my, being the fact I was born in Wapian, I was born reading hundreds of books weekly. Like, that's just, not weekly, that's kind of an overstatement. I was born reading hundreds of books yearly. So that's like common in our community. We've raised a generation, it's a great accomplishment of black people who truly enjoy and love to read and study. We, as we was putting together this presentation, me and my team, we had a blast gathering the facts and the information and putting it together and compiling it so I could be able to present it to the brother Reggie here right. at and the beautiful bro, shrine of my app. He come up. So here, okay, in close. Before Jabari come up, let me ask you one more question. Jabari, you ready? Almost. Tabari is getting ready to get into the ring with Zion Lex, okay. a Hebrew Israelite. What is your prediction? Or I would say, what positive advice you can add on to Jabari that he can probably use or he could probably go in and dig in some research and say, well, brother, I think if you do this, you got him. If you do that, you got him. Give us some positive advice for our brother Jabari. Honestly, I think I think Zion Lex is gonna kill Brother Jabari. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Hebrews don't stand a chance. <laughs> That's right. You already know. <laughs> but um, yeah. any positive, yeah. any positive advice that I would give the Brother Jabari is I would tell Jabari to keep it. I don't don't get in debt with them. From what I've seen, on, I've, I haven't debated. I went back and forth with Captain Zora, but I haven't debated them anybody. But what I've seen in the debates is we give them so much knowledge that they didn't even have a clue of, and we actually give them more ammunition for their misconstructions of pictures and images. Right. We give them so much information to be able to debate us in the first place. If you keep it simple and say, "Look, bro." <laughs> God ain't real. I'm, I'm leaving it right there. Period. Drop the mic. You know that type of style. Not literally. I know not literally, but I'm saying if you keep it very basic and stay in their doctrine, don't allow the Hebrews to get offensive. Cause they get offensive. They're strong in numbers and they come out in numbers. Mm -hmm. So now they're controlling the crowd, which now overtalks you, and now those vibrational frequencies take you off. And now you had the next. You know you don't realize it subconsciously. You don't subdue yourself and stop talking. So they come in such large numbers as an Im intimidation factor. So. Yeah. I would say for Brother Jabari to stay real calm, chill, and I would hit them directly. Come at the Torah. Period. Come for the Torah. Just stay in the Torah and ask them for everything that they say to prove outside of the Bible. That's it. Just prove oh, it outside the Bible. Guess what the topic is? That should be real good. Oh, what's the topic, sir? The origin of civilization. Oh, shit. I might. Yo. Now, you know. Jabari, that should be a letter slide. For well, check it out. Check it out. Because now you got to come out that Bible. They forced to. Because if they come out talking about God made people out of mud and surgeries with ribs, I mean, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going to ask for That's a refund. That's what my side. captain was saying. I'm going to ask for a refund. That's why my captain said, man, to let me fall back. I know it's going to be a landslide for him. Because I'm going to have to come out that um, Bible. You know, it, when you're dealing with, I mean, this is simple. Say to the flat earth. Cause I, so I never wanted me to speak on. You want me still? You still want me to speak yeah, on flat? Going on that. Going on that for the. Uh, I have bodied. I've never lost a conversation on the flat earth theory. Oh. I've never lost, and the reason oh, brother, why maybe I need to call you and Sanchez to bring they, you they're, both they're, they're attacking me too, you know. They attacking you? Who the flat earths? Yeah, I, I I I knock those guys up all over. The place <laughs> they well, say, you know, hold on, man. You know I've been looking for somebody to challenge them, and nobody what? has to I'll stay. tell me that. We'll, ta we'll tag have, team them. Supposed to have polite tonight. We'll tag team them. Deal with. <laughs> I'm gonna do. We will do we'll that. tag team them. Like, listen, I'm supposed to have polite tonight to deal with Sanchez tonight on the flat earth. Man, that's easy though. Yeah, what going. makes it so easy, but I'm gonna spoil it. But what makes it so easy? Right, let's go in on it. It's so, they say all the pictures from NASA is false. I put my hands up. 
We give them that. Fine. We'll deem every picture from NASA false. We'll say they never put a man on the moon. We'll give you all of that. Mm -hmm. It still stands the fact of reason that in nature, everything is a circle. I can drop a drop of water and it's a circle. It's always a sphere. My cells, my nucleus, atoms, subatomic particles, the, everything in nature stems from a circle or some sphere-like object. So from that science alone, I won't, I won't be able to say it's fact because I have not been in space yet. But from that science alone, I can deem 85% that everything in nature is going to mirror itself. Being the fact we're looking up at a circular sun and a circular moon and then knowing everything in our body is circular, everything in plants are circular, animals, everything on earth is circular. Yeah, Even hair grow is circular. My hair, well, not Spiral. white people. Spiral. Theirs come out straight. <laughs> but ours do because we're the natural people. We're original. So, you know what I mean? So, with that, with, with that, Wait, what did he just say? I said we're natural. We're original. So, what are they? There's some GMO. False. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were contradicting your argument. You weren't. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But with us being natural, so starting with starting with cells, nature, right there you can kill them. Just right there. And stay on that point. What they'll do is they'll take you in all these other Avengers because I've been watching their videos. Just stick on that one point and just say, no. Nature. No. Nature. No. Okay. Let's get a bottle of water and let's drop it slowly. And watch as the drop automatically turns into a circle. Grains of sand are circular. There's nothing in nature. So the only way you can deem the flat earth theory is if you put some form of supreme being or some form of spiritual god-like extraterrestrial whatever you want to call it being over it to make it that way. And that is a Caucasian science. And just as my brother Pharaoh from the Nuwapi Nation much loved him has said, they utilize that as something new so they can lead in something. They couldn't come lead in the Kemetic community because they got too much studying to do. They can't lead Nuwapians because they got too much studying to do. They can't leave in the Israelite community. So what they had to do, they had to create their own community. So let's all agree on some BS that has been dead for over a millennia. And then and let's lead in that and fight that. It's, not, it's really not worth it. Let's stop trying to find more reasons to disagree. We got enough reasons to disagree, black, uh, uh, black family. I'm dark, you're light. You're dark, I'm light. We got enough reasons to be arguing about. Let's start to deal with what we agree upon and not what we disagree upon. And from there, growth begins. Accept me as a Nuwapian, as I accept you as a comedic scientist, I accept you as an Israelite. And from there, we can communicate as two separate nations. And then we can become states to a united nation as we've done in pre-dynastic past, such as the Muscogee National Tribes, which migrated and brought together more than five Native American tribes together as one. But I'm going to pass it over to my brother, Brother Jabbar. Well, well, first of all, I want to I wanna say to you that um, I appreciate the, the presentation that our, our dear brother put forward. Um, I, I didn't intend to do it in this format, family, so I don't have a, a slides, really a lot of slides for you, just have a few slides for you. Um, I, I was hoping that this would be more of a dialogue, and that's fine. I think that this is just the beginning of, of conversations that I'm going to have with our, our dear brother. So we'll, we'll continue um, from there, on camera or off camera. So you might not see them all, but just understand that that's, that's how it's going to work. I want to um, first acknowledge that he, he has brought me a gift. Um, I want to thank him for that. That was really, he didn't, people don't usually come to your house and give you a gift anymore. That's how we did it back in the days. Mm -hmm. People don't do that anymore. So I want to thank him for that. And I have some items that I will give him as well, including my book, uh, Seven Little White Lies, A Conspiracy to Destroy the Black Self-Image. Mm -hmm. um, family, I really Sorry. hope that if you, it's already signed. I already signed it for you. Right. I, I, really, I really hope that, um, that, that you get a copy of it. Not necessarily because you agree with what I'm saying here on Sonetta's platform or not. The reality is that the information in it was composed so that we could actually raise ourselves as people of African descent and understand who we are so we can understand what we're capable of. Mm -hmm. And so I, I go through in that book to dismantle some of the greatest misconceptions about people of African descent. So anyway, um, there's been a lot that's been said and I really want to come to the point where I hope that I'm able to address quite a bit of it. Um, I, I, I will respectfully say that I, I truly believe that my brother needs to take a history course in ancient Kemet. I teach a college level history course in ancient Kemet. I teach a college level history course on ancient Nubia, which we would call Kush. Um, and so I, I think that sometimes what I've heard him do is what I hear a lot of people do who haven't necessarily um, done all of the study. He's actually uh, condensing large swaths of time. He's condensing thousands of years. Hundreds of years would be a problem. Decades would be a problem. Can you imagine if you found out that someone was saying that your grandson was your son, was your father? 
That'd be a problem. That's just dec an error of decades. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you're making an error of hundreds of years. And now let's imagine you're making an error of thousands of years. Let me point out to you where my, my dear brother has made an error of a few thousand years. First of all, he says that his focus and the focus of his community has been primarily uh, the proto-dynastic and the pre-dynastic folks. Now, you heard us talk about the dynasties, and he said there were 46 of them. Um, I, I want to be clear that most scholars would only give 32 of them. I could even give you 33. But 46, I have no idea how you could have that many dynasties, even including the, day, the, the, the rulers that he mentioned. Because those rulers are not rulers that we're not familiar with. Those rulers are already in that, that category. They're usually considered dynasty zero. So if you actually give them a dynasty, you're not going to have more than 32 or 33 dynasties. You have to understand how this works. And understand that our comedic ancestors, you need a seat, you could grab that seat right back there, pull it forward, you could sit wherever you want, please be comfortable. You need some water, you need... I'm fine. Okay. Um, understand that um, uh, this is important, not because our, our African ancestors actually said, this is Dynasty 1, this is Dynasty 2. It didn't really work that way. This is how historians, later historians, manage understanding what happens when and who did it. So understanding the dynasties is important because we're talking about a large period of time. We're talking about over 3,000 years so that you have to understand what happened when and how it happened. If you don't understand the dynasties, you could make some of the errors that my dear brother has made. So for example, he said once again that he um, deals mostly with pre-dynastic and proto-dynastic information. And he says that the people he's talking about are people that come from Napata and Nakata. Now, I want to say to you, family, that as someone who has studied this and traveled to the region more almost more times than I can count, I'm going to make my 15th trip in just two months. And understand that when I go, I'm not just going to look around. I'm leading the tours because it has been deemed that I have enough information to do so. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. I'm not just going back and forth there because I like the food. I'm going back and forth there because I'm bringing the information to our family. So, you have to understand, first off, that Napata and Nakata, and I just did this on Google. Somebody's going to say, he does his scholarship on Google. Brothers and sisters, I didn't know that that brother was going to bring that up. So yeah, I just pulled it off of Google. And I showed you where the modern village of Kenna which is where we would say the area of Nakata is, and the modern city of Karima is. Karima is where we'd say the modern city of Napata is. It is 1,029 kilometers apart. Some of you are gonna say, brother, we are not in Canada or, or the UK. What does that mean in miles? It's roughly 600, at, I'm sorry, 766 miles. Understand that that is an extremely long distance today and an ex a much longer distance before we had things like helicopters, planes, trains, and cars. This is a very long distance. Even if you could say that these people had communication with each other, you should understand that the distance that they have to span would mean that there would be substantive differences between those people. To say that those people come from those two areas, you would only make that argument if you're not familiar with the history or you're not familiar with the geography. And so you have to understand that. Today, you're straddling a national border. And in fact, even in the ancient world, you would have been straddling mostly a, a national border. Because for most of Kemetic society, Kemet's border went to about the second cataract. I'm not going to even get into that. But you need to understand that this is a large swath of land. Let's go even further. He mentions Napata. And he went in through, into a very interesting, and it really was interesting. I'm not, I'm, I'm, there's no shade there. Interesting description of the way that he renders the term linguistically. I found it interesting. In fact, I wrote a lot of notes. I, I, I think I'd love to talk with him more about it. But regardless of how interesting that was, understand that Napata is not a pre-dynastic entity. 
Napata was founded by Tehuti Mes III in the 15th century BCE. Kemet, even if you want to say Kemet has its origin at 3200 BCE, you're saying that pre-dynastic people were in the city of Napata 1500 years later. You cannot smash literally a millennium and a half and pretend it's the same thing. I can't even smash 40 years together and pretend it's the same thing. You are literally smashing 15 centuries together and pretending it's the same thing. And I'm being conservative because most people would say that Kemet has its beginning at 3200 BCE. So we're talking more than 15 centuries. That, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. And, and I want you to understand that the problem with this is the essential problem with much of what my brother has said. He talks about the other language forms that were analyzed in order to come up with this form, Nuwapu, and I know I'm saying it wrong. Is that right? I'm saying it right? Yes, Nuwapu. Okay, with, with the Nuwapu, the, the language of the Nuwabian nation, at which he says... Nuwapian. You said Nuwapian. Nuwapian. I said Nuwapian with a P. Oh, okay. okay. Nuwapian. Yeah. You know the B and the P sound similar. We agreeing on that. You've been watching the Yes. Videos. So <laughs> not uh, listen, I've been pay I've been focused on this on this group of the of the Kemetic Society for a long time. For a long time. I was actually pleased to be able to have someone here that could talk competently about the Nuwapian nation. That's why I asked him to be here. It wasn't I wasn't hiding. I didn't I didn't hide behind my door with a knife to jug him when he came by. Jug. I'm I'm showing you my Guyanese um background. To stab him when he came by. I wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't a bucket of water like in Home Alone to pour on him when he came in. I really wanted to have a real dialogue and I still want to have a dialogue with this brother because there are too few people who hear the call of ancient Kemet. We do not have the luxury of separating each other, but we should come to some fundamental understanding of what we're trying to resurrect. That's why I wanted to have this conf conversation. So. As he smashes these things together, and he talks to you about these proto-dynastic civilizations, he's talking about the Sabian script. By the way, you should understand that the reason why it's called Sabian is because it comes from the Sabian kingdom, which I'm going to give him 200 years. The earliest that it could come forward is about 1400 BCE. Once again, it's Please understand that that could, by no means could you say something that comes from 1400 BCE actually is earlier than 3200 BCE. You are once again smashing over 1500 years. By no means should the Sabian script, if there is a script, we could talk about that later, family. Don't get me on this. We'll talk about the script later. Um, we, we actually can't say that that is pre-dynastic. It is not. Ge'ez, which is a, le he keeps saying the name wrong. And I think that that means, I'm not sure if he's actually visited Ethiopia, and I have, and I take groups there. So you, you got to come with me. Not because I'm trying to sun you or nothing, but just because you're going to see some stuff that's amazing there. So understand that Anika and I lead tours to Ethiopia. We'll probably be back there in January. I would like to get um, Tazoriak to go with you. Listen, man. So Listen, as much as Tazoriak and I degree, disagree on, he said he would. as much as we disagree on, we would, just have, we would just have fun being there because yeah. I enjoy him as a person and I think he's an honor. He's, an, he's a person that has honor. So, you know, I wouldn't have to sleep with one eye open with him next to me because we would, we would work like that, even though we disagree on a lot. So, you know, it would be amazing to see these things. Africans, you have to see what you did when you were on top of the world because if you want to get back there, you had better look Listen to what your ancestors are saying. More on that later. So he mentions Ge'ez, which is no longer spoken, by the way. The language is now called Amharic. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be really clear that my queen worked with the primary scholar of Amharic studies. If you go to Cornell University's website, you will still see the description of the study that she did with a, a wonderful scholar, Dr. Ayele Bikeri, who is from Ethiopia and, 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 is, and went back to Ethiopia. So family, sometimes people say that I must be European because I have an Ivy League degree. I studied at Africana Studies. I studied with African people who had the highest level of scholarship.
That's what I did. And with all the, the classes that I took with the Tom who outside of Africana studies, my most difficult classes were Africana classes because they said, you can't come here and get an A because you're black. You just think you're going to black it up? It takes scholarship to understand what your African ancestors did. And they put me to task. And that is where you are seeing the fundamental basis of my knowledge come from. It comes from Af the Africana Studies and Research Center at Cornell University. Um, so, and, and then he mentions Ethiopian. Of course, he says Ethiopian. I know that he, ad he admits that that's a Greek, la uh, Greek um, word. I'm not beating him up on, e on the use of the word Ethiopian. I am not. But I want you to understand that all of those languages he mentioned, by the way, the Sabian and Ge'ez are really, they, they work together. So he said, he's almost like said, I was with four people, Jabari, 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 and Jabari. And Jabari is not as old as he'd like Jabari to be. So even though he's actually not described four different languages when he told you he did, he also is not describing someone who is old as he says they are. So if you're studying proto and pre-dynastic cultures, you should know this. You cannot do that. And the reason why he's doing this is because he's trying to tell you that the Nuwapic language is older. It's an ancient language. Family, even if it's based, even if I just give our, our elder, Dr. Malachi York, the, the, if I just say, okay, he did those things that he said they, he did with those elders. Understand that the information that we've received does not confirm that. It doesn't confirm that. Some of you somewhere are going to find pictures of Jabari shaking Donald Trump's hand. I, yeah, I met him at one point. He gave some money to the New York Urban League. I was working at the Urban League. Does that mean that I was studying with Donald Trump? No. Oh my no. I can't believe he went there. <laughs> no. Just because you show a picture with someone don't mean that you studied with them. I have pictures with lots of people. Really? That's the shot you got? I thought you was going to come home. So you got to, I'm not trying to destroy you, brother. You're my brother. So I, I want you to understand that even if I assume that he did what he said he did, what the product of what he's describing does not tell me he did what he said he did. Nuwa, the Nuwapic language is a newer language, and I'm not even beating our brother up for creating a new language. I get creating new languages. What's wrong with trying to speak another language than the language that the European, the Tom who gave us? There's nothing wrong with that, but here's the challenge. If you hear the call from ancient Kemet, you should read what your ancestors wrote. If you hear the call of ancient Kemet, you should be able to go back to their greatest accomplishments, the temples, the tombs and read what they left on the wall for you. Because ultimately, I argue, at, uh, family, that our ancestors understood that there would be a period we were catching hell. That our ancestors understood there'd be a time that we would not be able to speak African tongues to each other. That we would not be able to go back to our home as anything more than visitors and tourists. And that's why they wrote their greatest knowledge down on stone. Because they knew there'd also be a time that we would mature and look for our names and look for our greatest teachings. If you are using a language other than the ancient Kemetic language and you consider that you are part of the Kemetic community, you have to be challenged on that. That's why people in the Shrine of Ma'at learn the Medu my, my My queen is doing a class in less than a month she's doing a class, both in, in person and online. That's the reason why when Baba Heru and I, Baba Heru, Heru Ankh Ra Samad Se Pata was one of my greatest teachers and he is my spiritual father. So when something is not right, he's calling me. When something is amazing, he's there with me. He has been my spiritual father for nearly two decades. But when I have disagreements with him, and we disagree on the meanings of things all the time, because there comes a time when the teacher enjoys sparring with the student because you've got enough information now that you can sharpen each other. We do this all the time. If you had ever come and seen us in his studio talking, you would say, is that your teacher? Why y'all disagreeing so much? And then I will go and hug him like he is my blood father because that's how much I love him. Because he has been committed to me from day one. That's why. But when we have those disagreements, half of it is in the glyphs. You believe that? Really? Let's look at the glyphs. Because you can't make an argument without looking at what was written. I can't just make an argument because I think it sounds nice. That's not the level of scholarship that I learned at Cornell or learned at Baba Heru's feet in the Shrine of Ptah. That's not how I was trained.
You have to prove what you believe by reading the script because your ancestors gave you one. If you are developing a new script, you are cutting the tie between yourself and your ancestors. I'm talking about language upstairs. Family, I hope you understand why Jabari spent that much time on it. Some of you might have said, what is going on? Didn't they cover that topic? It was of critical importance. Especially because Brother York does, Prince York, does not respect the things that come from the Tom Who, from the European. So that means that he would not read, for example, a book like this called Ancient Egyptian Literature, Volume 1, which has a lot of wonderful um, uh, uh, translations of your comedic stories. This is in English. And the person that edited it is Miriam Lichtem, who was a Tom Who. So he would discard this. So if you're going to discard this, then you have to be able to read it yourself. We can, and I can. If you are teaching your family another language, then you can't read it yourself. And he says it's not true. Family, please don't make me bring stuff down here and ask him to translate it because he's going to struggle. I'm hearing how he's pronouncing words. Family, I'm telling you that they are not studying the Medunetter enough. I'm telling you that. Please don't. Please don't let this young man make me do that. You complimented us on how I'm, dude, I'm not saying you're not without compliment. I've complimented you many times. Okay. We, we talked about Okay, 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 okay. You're asking me about Okay, okay, okay. Let me continue here. Let me continue here cuz I don't want to I don't want to get into all of that. Okay. So let's 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 continue to move. By the way, he um in doing that, that's a problem. You have to draw from the language. Um I want to get into something else that um that this brother actually told me. And he actually said that Europeans are not Africans. Family, I know that the Tom who has done some devilish things to us. I know the Tom who has done some of the worst possible things to us. When I tell you that they're actually our family, it's not because I have any, um, I have any connection to them. It's not because I'm beholden to them. It's not because I love them more than I love myself. I'm telling you what science tells us. Science tells us that the European, the Asian, and anybody else you want to bring into the conversation, they are actually our children. And I know that our dear brother and my dear brother, Sanetta, had a, a, talked about, um, actually for a little while, they actually talked about what happens when your arm is in a cast. And I'm going to say to you it's an interesting conversation, but it doesn't actually address the top, the, the point. What you have to understand, oh boy, did I just shut this off? What you have to understand, what you must understand is that we're not talking about something that happens over a matter of weeks or a matter of months. We're talking about something that happens over tens of thousands of years. And you should know that every scholar worth their weight who are European, the Tom who, who are African, who are Asian, now understands that, yes, yeah, not connecting to this. Now understands, because I have to put in my password, now understands that the African is the origin of humanity. That's what they understand. There are some times that they try to disagree. Those disagreements are ridiculous. I, I can't tell you how many times people have sent me the article, the study that came out recently that says that they found earlier bones in a part in Libya. Sometimes they find earlier bones in a part of Europe. That doesn't, but even the people that are coming out with those studies are not saying that there's not an African genesis. What they're saying is, is that perhaps Africans left their continent earlier than we previously knew. There's no distinction here. Scholars understand that if you look at the fossil remains, you can tell that the earliest fossil remains are in Africa. Now let's go further than that, because some of you, and I remember that there was actually my pastor when I was still a Roman Catholic and just coming into knowledge said, well, how do we know that we're just not going to find older bones? We don't have to just rely on old bones, family, because now we can do genetic studies and we can actually see that so that people in Central South Africa have the entire complement of human DNA. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. That they have the DNA of every other group on the planet. And if you look at 
their, uh, the, the mutations that occur regularly in humanity, you can see that you can actually see when people diverge. That's how they're able to tell this story now, according to genetics, and not just through looking at bones. This is, we, don't know, we no longer even have to look at bones. We know that every person on the planet is the offspring of one African woman. This was the, the um, actual analysis that took place in 1988. Now, I, I can't beat up my brother for, I'm sure he saw it even though he wasn't around yet. I was a young man in 1988. And I remember my father, my father never brought home a magazine and talked about it. But he brought home these magazines in a paper bag because he was holding them like he had gotten some cherished information that he needed to share with his family. And when he got home, he said, my name wasn't Jabari then. He said, Corwin, look at this. And he showed me the magazine. He pulled it out of the paper like it was sacred, like he was pulling out gold. And he shows it to me and says, this tells us who we are. And as soon as I read it, you know what he said? He said, put it back in the paper bag. We're going to talk about it at dinner. Because he wanted me to understand who I was, family. This information is actually old. So what did the scientists do when they came up with this study? They looked at the placentas. Yes, the, the placenta is that sac that holds babies. They looked at placentas from dozens of women from every continent, of every ethnic group, of every language group, of every quote-unquote racial group in the world. And they looked at what is called the mitochondrial DNA. And as they looked at the mitochondrial DNA, that portion of the DNA allows you to go back among your mother's line. And as they did that, they could see that every person, regardless of their racial group, regardless of their ethnic group, regardless of the content they lived on, regardless of anything, whether they had blue eyes, red hair, black hair, whether they were the darkest African or the palest European, they could see that they all had an origin from one woman in Africa. I didn't say African women, one woman in Africa. That's a powerful story, because I know my mother, who had four children, was amazing. You can't mess with her, even today. She's nearing 80, and she is one of the toughest women I know. Can you imagine if you gave birth to all a civilization? What kind of woman would that be? That's the kind of stock that you come from, African women. And I know that we're angry with the European, with the Tom who. I get it. But fundamentally, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to first do what grandmama did. Boy, go get the switch. And then when they come in with the switch, you deal with the transgression and then you love them. I'm not saying we need to love them before we deal with the transgression family. We need to deal with what they've done and then love them. Why? Because then we have to put all of human civilization back in proper order. The African is the leader of civilization. Not just the African leader of Africans. The African is the elder. The elder has to set forth the parameters by which all of humanity will work. That's what we need to do. And so telling us that the, the, the Tom who is not our child... By the way, that even gives them more power because they, they're not even our children. They have their own pristine origin. That's the argument that Europeans made. And I know that my brother York has used the word Caucasian. That's because I haven't yet given him a copy of my book. The word Caucasian was developed because a man named Johann Friedrich Blumenbach was trying to argue that the European had a separate origin. That's where it came from. And so he said, absolutely. You got to give me one, man. I gave you a book. Yeah, you did. You gave it away. No, when I interviewed Professor James Small, yeah. he was like, so I really want to read this. I really want to read it. I said, all right, just take my book. I'm going to give you, listen, and now, now, him, now, family, I don't know if you can hear, exactly. I don't know if you can hear what Sonnet is saying. So Sonnet is saying that. When you see Professor Smalls, the, he listen, Sonetta Sa just said that one of my most esteemed elders wanted to read my book and he gave it to him. Right. How in the world could I say to Sonetta, you gave away your book, you can't get one. Right. I'm just, I'm completely honored. If I was a little lighter, you would see me blushing a little bit here. I, I, I feel it, that an elder wanted to read my book. That's, that's the greatest honor that, that you could give. I have to say thank you to you for even giving it to him. Right. 
So of course you got a you got a book. Yeah, cuz I want to read the book. So you too. honestly need to know that this is something that we discuss. We we should no longer use the word Caucasian because the word Caucasian actually means that they are an, the original people cuz the man that developed the term well, said that came from the Caucasus. Yes, but his argument was they came from the Caucasus Mountains and the rest of humanity devolved from them. Mm. That the Euro, the Asian and the African were there uh, inappropriate offspring. That's what the, the, the word means. Get rid of it, family. I know that you use the word Caucasian because you're trying to be polite to them. That's not being polite. You might as well bend down and give them your hand. Stop it. We got to get rid of that term. That's why you hear me use the word Tomhu. By the way, that's the oldest name for the European. We gave it to them. <gasps> and I, you've heard me say that even Europe is the name of an African queen. So we have given the European all of their names because we are the elder of civilization. Don't, don't mess with that order of things. You have to do the research, family. Okay, so let's move to another topic. Brother, um, my dear brother says also that um, the pyramids in Sudan are older than Kemet, do carbon dating. First of all, you need to, oh, by the, oh, before I do that, can I show the family this sonnetta? Wow, it didn't, it's not moving. Right now, family, on the Prince York channel. It's not moving. I gave, I gave a very, very valid and intelligent um, ex, uh, explanation on many things. Brother Jabari's uh, misconstrued and... Uh, Are you actually doing that while we're here? Indeed, indeed. Uh, that's not distracting? That's not fair. I'm not distracting. I'm yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. come on. So what's going on is... Um, I wouldn't do that while he was talking. I would not do that as his family. I wouldn't do that as his... Listen, folks, listen, just understand that while he was talking... First of all, I didn't agree to this, to this, um, this framework, this platform. I didn't agree. I didn't agree that we were going to stand up here and do presentations. Because I fundamentally said that this was not a debate. But he wanted to do that. So now I'm doing it. He went first. I was silent. Some of you, I didn't say you were upset. I said that some of you actually might have thought that Brother Jabari was not in the room. I was sitting here quietly listening to his presentation. And so I would ask that he gives me the same respect to sit quietly and listen to my response and my presentation. Oh, yeah. I not? And so, uh, not if you're talking to the family out loud on Facebook, just four feet from me. We're on YouTube live. So, or YouTube. That's not the way you do that. So anyway, take a look at this description of the migrations. We can actually see, according to this map, when people got to other parts of the world. So you can actually see that people didn't get to um, China until 50,000 years ago, roughly. That's a long time, family. In 50,000 years, your body will adapt to certain changes in your environment and you will actually change. By the way, we're not even talking to you about which African left to go to China or to North America or to Australia. So you have to understand that there were even, we were on Africa so long that there were even changes amongst groups of people on, Afri on the African continent. So please understand that that is what you're seeing. You have to understand that what we're talking about is the African being the, the origin of civilization. And as you see that, I truly hope that you'll put your African mothers and fathers in their proper context. Let, let me say something else before I move on here. Brother York also, bro, uh, Prince, uh, Prince York also said that um, the pyramids in the Sudan are older than those in Kemet. First of all, you should know that the word pyramid, I, I don't, I'm not begrudging him for using the word pyramid because if he used the older terms, some of you would not know what he was talking about. But I'm only begrudging him because he continues to use the word Egypt. And I will not give the Greeks my homeland. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to call that land Kemet. And I'm going to tell you clearly, if he wants to call it Tom Array, I would say Tom Mary. I have no problem with him doing that. But on this platform, he doesn't need to say Egypt. Family, you are people who are doing research and scholarship. Don't allow him to continue to give your legacy away to the Tom who has taken it. That land is called Kemet. 
And the pyramids, the reason why they call that place, those things pyramids, is because when the Greeks came to Kemet, they looked at these magnificent structures and they said, you know what, these look like the little rice cakes that we fire when we're out camping. Those are called pyramids. So they ended up calling one of the greatest engineering, one of the greatest architecture, one of the greatest spiritual devices ever conceived that can still not be replicated by a small rice cake that they used when they were camping. I'm not going to use the word pyramid with you either because I think you're stronger and you're more intelligent and you're more studied. I'm going to use the word myrrh or mirkut. You probably heard me say use the word mirkut before. So that's what I'm going to use for, with you. But he says that Mirkuti in the Sudan are older than Kemet. Do carbon dating. Family, you can't carbon date rock. I never said do carbon dating. You did, uh, he says he didn't do car, say carbon, carbon dating. You have the, an advantage here that I don't even have. Just run back the video and you'll hear him say, do carbon dating. It's a direct, that's a direct quote. I wrote it down as such. So you need to understand that you cannot carbon date rock. But what you can do is you know who built them when, because each of the rulers would have built one for themselves. And we know when they ruled. We know that that entire city was built almost at the time when Kemet was falling. We're talking about around the 25th dynasty is when they were built. That great Merkuti field at Nuri, that great Merkuti field at Meroe, those are not older than Kemet and then Kemet's Mirkuti. By no stretch of imagination, no one would argue that who was familiar with the history. And so our dear brother needs to study the history. It would strengthen his arguments. It would strengthen his arguments. And so I really hope that, that he continues to do that. The reason why he did that is because he wants to say that spending time in the Sudan connects him to, um, to pre-dynastic Kemet. And I, you have to understand that what he's de the people he's describing don't have pre-dynastic languages. The people he's describing are later in the region. The people that he's describing don't have scripts. And so the, you have to understand that even now somebody's going to say, what about the Meroitic script? That's a script that comes after. So if you're talking about pre-dynastic Kemet, find me the pre-dynastic script from the area around modern day Ethiopia or the Sudan. In fact, find me a, an older script anywhere in Africa. You can't do it. I'm telling you that I know this because I've devoted my life to studying it, family. I've devoted my life to seeing these ancient spaces. Our brother even said that he had not been to Ethiopia to see those places. I have. I lead trips there. So some of this that we've heard will change when our dear brother does a little bit more research and a little bit more study. He also says that the, that the six kings of Europe were called that because six is VI. By the way, you, family, you know that VI is a Roman is, 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 is Roman numerals, right? How in the world would they call them the Vikings using a Roman language and they had other languages? I, listen, I don't even want to spend time on the Tom Who, but I, I want you to understand that those arguments need work. Our dear brother needs work in history in order to make these arguments. Now, let me begin to sum up now. I, I want you to really get that one of the things that our brother said to us is that because of the study that um, is done in ancient by his community, they know everything. Now he used some more colorful languages, language, but you have to I, know. I, I wouldn't use it, but I'm not begrudging him for using it. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to quote him, but I'm not going to say it directly. That they know everything, and if this is an actual display of the knowledge that they've accumulated, then they need to know more than everything because there's a lot missing. There's a lot missing. Now, I'm going to also say to you that I really wanted to have a conversation with my dear brother rather than be in, in more of a debate format, but you should also see that I even wanted to question him about these sorts of images. These are the sorts of images that made me not actually go. I'll even give you the slide. I'll give it to you. 
Um, these are the things that made me not actually join um, the predecessors of the Nuwapian community. Because when I saw them, I actually thought, well, what am I seeing here? Are we seeing that the leader is depicting himself as Jesus? Is that your Now, I want to be really is clear. It absolutely is my interpretation. Sure you say that on camera. That's so I want I just said it on camera. Okay, great. So I want to be really clear. I want to be really clear with you. By the way, this is exactly what he said he wasn't going to do, but he's doing it. And and that's okay because he's he's going to get he's going to get better at this. And I want him to get better at this. Now let me say to you, let me yeah, I'm young into comedic science. I was actually in the comedic community before this young man was born. And, his, and, his brother. and I want you to be really clear that the question that I want you to understand, he's losing his discipline and his patience. And why would he do that on camera? If he wants to be upset with me, be upset with me off camera because family, you're seeing how he's behaving. Just at least be strategic if you're not going to be disciplined. At least be strategic. Anyway, look at this. Now, I'm telling you that he's depicting himself in many ways in the way that, that Jesus does. He actually believes that some of these people were historical, literal characters. And family, if you followed anything I've said, I have, will say to you that Jesus Christ is a mythological character. But I will also say to you that it's dangerous when we identify ourselves with those people that people think are deities. I will not do that with you, family. You heard me have a deep conversation with my dear brother, Reggie. And Dr. Reggie said to me, he said, one of the problems I have with people who practice comedic spirituality is that they, they paint themselves as kings and as gods. That's what he said to me. And I said to Reggie, I will not do that. I will not do that. Was Brother Reggie not also talking about these sorts of images? We have to be careful. Now, let's be clear. I believe that the divine force is inside everyone. But one of the things that turned me off from the Ansu Allah, com Allah community when I was a young man was that I would see images uh, in books that would show um, uh, uh, Moses and, and Adam, and they almost all looked like D Dr. York. And I said, what is he trying to do? Is he trying to tell people that he's divine and that they should worship him? Now, I'm going to tell you that brother, our Prince York will answer that question. And I know he's going to disagree. And I would be pleased if he disagreed. But what I do want to say is that we have to be careful. We have to be careful. If this is what we do, we are going to do damage to our people. Because fundamentally what we need to do is not give them leaders, not give them deities. We need to tell them that they are divine and that they have the ability to do all those things that are necessary, that they can actually change their environment, that they can reform their communities, and that they can actually sit once more at the forefront of human civilization. As long as we continue to tell them they need to follow someone, that's a problem. Now, you're going to say to me, what do you mean? Aren't you a chief priest of a temple? Do people not follow you? Well, in my tradition, being a chief priest means that I actually have a responsibility to actually care for people, to give to people. Not that I am above them. Listen to any of my initiates and they'll tell you that I say that. I'm not imbued with more divine energy than they are. My job is to help them cultivate the divine energy inside of them. And so I want us to really be careful with this family. Now, as I close, I, I, I want to thank Prince York for coming forward to having this conversation. It's not the format that I intended. It's not the format I intended. In fact, I know that Prince York, I'm sure that's Anika coming in. I know that Prince York is upset with this slide. I know he is. And that's, I, I, honestly, if we were having a discussion and a dialogue, he wouldn't be upset with a slide. But he didn't want to have a conversation. He wanted us to do this in this, in this way where I present information, he presents information. So this is, what the, this is what happens. I was completely prepared to have this on my tablet and show it to him and ask, me to talk, and ask him to talk about it. But I wanted him to do it because I have some concerns about it. And as long as we continue to do that, our people will be stifled. As long as we continue to do this, our people will not reach their highest heights. So with that, I want to say peace, family.
I hope that I've brought you information that has been edifying and helpful. I hope that I've helped you to move forward and understand some concepts. And I know that even in your comments, I'm not saying that I'm doing that because I am a master teacher. I am a student like you. I just might have been along for the ride a little bit longer than some of you have. And so my job is to help bring you along just as others brought me along. And then I learn from those who I teach just as much as I learn from people who are teaching me. So with that, I say Shemem Atep, the divine force in me greets the divine force in you. I look forward to having our Prince um, uh, York uh, discuss some of this. Thank you. First and foremost, family, right back, right back to everybody that's on my channel as well as peace to the people over here. I find this picture right here, I want everybody to get a close up on it, quite hilarious. And, I've based, and it's all based on the, uh, the interpretation of the brother Jabari, not the interpretation of Dr. Malachi Z. York. Dr. Malachi Z. York's goal in even putting pictures and breaking some laws of the Quran, which putting pictures in the biblical text at all, was for the purpose of we as black people could see ourselves as gods. And the pictures of most of the people that's in Dr. Malachi Z. York books are drawings done by a sister by the name of Joyce Haynes, who actually drew depictions of the people within the community, influential people within the Nuwapian community. So they're not made to look like Dr. York. They're people within our community. So therefore, when we were speaking about Moses, etc., it's not supposed to be the real image. It's supposed to be so we can emulate ourselves as such because they, what the Greeks and, and as, as termed as, uh, what do they call it? Uh, what they term as pagan worship or idol worship, we as ancient Egyptians term as our ancestors and we put our faces and put our stamp on each and everything. Another thing Brother Jabari slipped and made a very, very sad mistake on was my interpretation and my study of Napata and and the ancient Nakada, because he, but once again, Brother Jabari keeps trying to debate me on language, yet he speaks none, and Prince York speaks seven. So with that over, and, and, and I'm, learn, I'm actually getting more of my fluency working on eight to nine languages now. So when dealing with, he talks about the Medunetta, right? And this is my last thing I'm going to say before I close out. Um, when dealing with the Medunetta, he says and that he makes proclamations in which Nuwapians have never said. He makes assumptions in which not, Nuwapians have never said. And he has not to prove in none of, his, none of his presentation, not one quote directly from Dr. Malachi York saying that Nuwapians do not hold to the Medunetta. He cannot show or prove that. He cannot show and prove that this image of Dr. Malachi York is of him in a Messiah-like figure. The master teacher, we look at the master teacher as a teacher and as a messenger for our people in this day and time. We do not put the master teacher at a religious stance of any kind. We acknowledge him as a master teacher. We put his image in the books that he wrote. As you will find, I'm pretty sure, many authors have their images in the books they wrote. But this is the game that people like to play so they can give those subtle indications that Dr. Reggie gave numerous of times when they lead towards religious belief system, etc. But Brother Jabari is speaking from a sense as which he has knowledge on the Nuwapian community when he has absolutely none. He even, he, from what I've seen, he's only presented two of the Nuwapian books. So I'm explaining Napata and Nakata. I did not jump over 15,000 years worth of time period, uh, 1,500 years of time period. That did not happen whatsoever. What I said is I explained to Brother Jabari upstairs, and I hope it's left in the video and not cut out, that dealing with Napata, I said, if we are a people who live in a region, and we move out of the region because of political or social issues, you, we, we were dated by Caucasian Asian researchers by the time that we landed on a certain region, not based on our birth date. So whereas Napata, I completely agree. Whereas uh, the common term, most time term that people call him is Thutmose the third, where they would say founded Napata. That is absolutely correct. But the people of that culture, the language of that culture, etc., already existed. Brother Jabari commonly uses common, studied, uh, uh, what I would say, the the obvious and quick research answers to things. Whereas as Nuwapians, we get much more in-depth and we try to find the mysteries of Egypt, not just what's on the common, you know, what, what you can find, as he stated in the beginning of his build, that people on my channel miss uh, uh, the, the things that you can find on Google. And now, at the end of everything, I was respecting his build until he attempted to debunk Dr. York with these images saying that Dr. York, or, or, or implying that Dr. York set himself as, as, as a Jesus or a Messiah-like figure. When the master teacher has said, specifically outside his mouth, in the video, truth versus faith versus belief. I am not Jesus. I never depict myself as Jesus. 
I'm the one who's going to come and teach you that you all are gods on the planet Earth. And that's what we were about. And we put our images on everything. If you go to the Nuwapian temple, you'll see all of the Nuwapian elders deified in a deified form with a full uh, 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 kapresh on their head, as well as a namuz or dabar as a headdress and, and, and deemed as deification because we deify all our ancestors, both living and deceased. So that's how we as Nuwapians apply. As far as the, 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 the space between Nakata and Napata, the entire region of Egypt, which he refers to as Kemet, but I refer to as Egypt comfortably because of the people who lack, who lack the overstanding of Kemet, is different styles of teaching. I'm not going to debate it because you can't debate a teacher to another teacher's style of teaching. I'm not going to play knick-knack paddywhack with that. But as far, like seriously, but as far as the, 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 the distance between Nakata and Napata, we all know between the, the, the Nubo Egyptian, entire Nubo Egyptian region was all controlled by the same, what they want to call Kemetic, Kushite, Nubian, whatever title you want to give it, I, I uphold I, to not only African scholarship, but I uphold to our own research and our own people. The Caucasian dictates all information globally, and he feeds you his story, which becomes history. Thus, the brother was very correct when he said Prince York needs to get his historical records right. I very much so do. I need to study more of the white man's story so I can teach all the black man's. Because I'm not very, I'm not very informed. I don't like to stay in the formation of anybody. I'm very outformed, and I deal more so with African directly descent. That's what we study, and that's what we as Nuwapians stand on. We deal with pre-dynastic and proto-dynastic Egypt and, and, and Nubia, and in that time time period, the language that was spoken, we utilized, which if you want to deem the right or wrong, but me and him had a full conversation. He was not able to converse with me in Meruneta. He said that his wife does, but he was not able to. What? I spoke directly to him in, and, and then I even shown and proved the similarity in, in the language, whereas he said words like Tamahu, well, he said words like Tamhu or Tamhu, and we in Wapik, we have a proper pronunciation, being the fact that I've actually studied and mastered multiple languages. And he constantly, lastly, he constantly makes these comments these constant quotes at my age as if he did not think I was qualified enough to speak to him, he wouldn't have act to, asked to speak to me in the first place. So, being the fact I'm I believe I'm about half his age. I'm 25 years old currently, if you're going by the Gregorian calendar. It being the fact that I'm half the brother's age, I think I'm very much so, in even most cases, overqualified. He mentioned I had not been to Ethiopia, which I have not. My family is in Sudan. I've visited Sudan on numerous occasions. I've been all over Africa. I've never been to Ethiopia. But guess what? I'm still a very young man, still a very wealthy man, and I will definitely plan that trip. And as a matter of fact, I will go with Brother Jabari, uh -oh. as well as I will uh -oh. read his book, challenge his book, debunk his book, destroy his book, and make his book sales go up even more so everybody else can do the same. This is Prince York, and understand it, you can't stop Pops, you can't stop the Alphamation, and the brother Jabari himself is reading Dr. York Alphamation. I'm sure he cannot say that everything in the book is false. Whether he chooses to agree or disagree, oh, our languages are actually quite mirrored, and I've shown and proved it to him. Very few words are different, but 85%, which brother Jabari agreed with upstairs, of the language is in fact the same. Well, I said, for example, I said the word Kemet comes from Chem, which is meaning black or dark tone. And I said black or dark tone in our language, Nuwapu ye is what do you remember is kamem come i said did you remember what i I'm, said i'm sorry i was writing a note I'm so is sorry. is kamem meaning black so as you can see kem and kamem the similarities as you see how they say don't y'all say hotep or you hold two hat tap i say head tap head tap he, they say head tap what does they say head tapu actually what does head tapu mean to you uh, in the generally means, well, in the Metaneta we can disagree with what it means. Mm -hmm. it all, it, you can describe it almost as saying offerings or blessings. Okay, great. Um, so some people say that it means peace, but in actuality, it, you could describe it as peace, but it means something a little bit more Any as well. Any Nuwapian streaming live right now will know as fact that the word Hatep in Nuwapuyi means bliss or bless. That is an actual fact. So the correlation, being, and that's the thing, and I'm going to say this for everybody on YouTube everywhere. If you are not fluent or even have a Nuwapic study book, which I will send you and your mate to review, if you are not fluent or even have a Nuwapian study book on our language, you are not even nearly close able to debunk such a theory unless you have studied it. I can't try, I'm, and nor am I trying to take away from the Meruneta. He even went to the aspect, and this was the greatest reach of them all, and then I'm going to leave it alone. He even went to the aspect of saying that the Nuwapic was out of tone, when in actuality, Nuwapic, we utilized it as a tuning for the proper translation because we're not going to hold to the Caucasian being of African descent. I will always disagree on that. And we're not going to hold to the Caucasian 
Caucasian of having the proper translation and trust in the white man all of a sudden after we was just being lynched less than 60 years ago. But we are, we're not going to hold to... We've been lynched this year. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm not going to hold to the same source. I'm not going to hold to the same source to bring forth facts. Let's stop the BS. Um, let's, I mean, and, and if, if Brother Jabari would like to really, really, really put this together, then uh -huh. Sadnetta, uh -huh. this is an official call out. What? And I'm calling Brother Jabari out. Don't do that, man. I want to do an official debate with him. I would like to do it in March of next year, 2018. And I would like to do a pregame show on Sidenetta TV on Google Hangout. So, therefore, we can show and prove the facts. And let me not drop Sidenetta's mic, but y'all get the idea. You can't. <laughs> Pretend. Drop it. Drop it past where they can see. It's dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, it's dropped. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Jabari. Real quick. Uh, you know, I, I, I admire this young man. I really do. And I'm not calling him young because I'm trying to sun him or insult him. I'm calling him young because he's young. That's all. Brother's 25, by the way, because I am admiring, no, I didn't, because I'm admiring what he's able to do which in, in, a, in a very short period of time. That's why I'm saying that he's a young man, because I'm actually impressed that someone at 25 can do what he does. So if you don't hear me saying young man and say that that is admiration, I, I don't know what to say to you, family. I'm saying that, and I said to you, I don't know if I could do what he did when I was 25, and I had a college degree. So I want to say that I respect what he is doing. I do believe that just like a muffin that falls when you come take it out of the oven too soon, he needs a little bit more baking. And that's the problem that we have here. He said many things, and, and I hope that you were listening carefully. He says, first of all, that I can't talk about Nuwapik unless I understand the language. Well, I'm telling you that when he describes the origins of the language, that doesn't make any sense. So maybe the language is great, but he can't just, he can't describe it. I'll give him that. Maybe he's not the right person to have this conversation around the Nuwapik language around. I'll give him that. I would love to be able to talk with someone who could actually tell me where the sources are. By the way, he says, listen carefully, he says that 85% of the language is the Medunetar. But then he says that he took those languages from pre-dynastic people and who spoke different versions of languages and put them together. Family, none of those pre-dynastic people are pre-dynastic people. I've already explained that to you. And then second of all, none of those people speak the Medunetar. So if you got your language from those people, how could 85% of it be the Medunetar? He even has the nerve to say that he tried to discourse with me in the Medunetar. Family, I don't know what he was speaking. That was not the comedic language. And that's the problem that I have with a group of people who do not focus on the comedic language because they continue to use things and to say things and presuppose that they're speaking the Medunetar. Prince York did not speak the Medunetar. When he said the word Hetep, that was the most Medunetar he's spoken in this house in seven hours. So you need to understand, family, why would you create a language when we have one? Why would you do that? And if you're going to do it because you want to be able to prevent other people from understanding what you're saying, I get it. If, you say, if he said that to me, I would say, oh, I got you. If he said to me, I created a new language because we wanted to have people speak something other than the Tamhu tongues that they were forced upon them, and so we developed a new one, but that, is, that says nothing about the one that you're talking about, I would say, well, I kind of understand that, but if you are from the Kemetic tradition, you should speak the Kemetic language. We love your crown. And so that is, that is what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. So, so I got to so I gotta, I, I gotta take issue with that. I have to take issue with that because what he's saying does not pass muster. Family, just listen to what he said and think about it yourself. You know that what he's saying doesn't make sense. You know that. Let's go a little bit further with what he said. He said that, um, uh, uh, that his, his father was not trying to paint himself as Jesus the Christ. Look at his hand position. Look at the, the lamb. Look at the lion behind him. Look at all the people here. By the way, if he wants to say that he didn't just do this, he needs to show me some other images of Jesus the Christ that aren't of his father. Because when I was trying to come into knowledge and I looked at the literature that, that, that and, and I, you know, I didn't do that to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Have some discipline here. Don't do that. Don't do that. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond as many times as you like or as many times as you're able. And you've already called me out for a debate in March. As long as I'm in the country, I will be there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what you're asking for, but 
That's okay. We could do it. We, we started. So, so you need to under. By the way, understand that I didn't even bring slides, and he's already upset. I just made these sitting in the back of the room. When I have a chance to bring slides, you're gonna have to call 911 for this brother because as good as his blood pressure is, he gonna lose it. He's not ready for me, and he shouldn't be ready for me. He's 25. He shouldn't be ready for me. I respect what he is able to do, but don't call me out and try to have a debate. If you do that, I'm not going to come go easy on you because you're younger. You're going to get annihilated because you demanded a debate. So family, when I do annihilate him, some of you are going to say, look at that old man beating up on a young boy. The young boy, listen, it's like I'm at the barber shop and the young boy got up and, and, and straight duffed me. What am I supposed to do? Say, oh, that's a young boy. I'm going to just take it. No, if he swings, he got to deal with the fire and the fury when it comes. And that is what he's going to get. That's what he's going to get. So I don't know if he knows what he's asking for. I also don't know why he has to wait all the way to March. I don't know what he's thinking he's going to learn between September and March. Because you have a debate in December. But you better, uh, that, that has nothing. I, brother, I could, I could prepare for this over the course of a few hours. So I, I don't know why he thinks that this is going to be challenging to me. Um, so anyway, you can see, he's telling you not to trust your lying eyes. By the way, even just look at his body language. He was so uncomfortable that he stood in front of the picture to talk to you about it. Understand that this is our good elder, Dr. York, depicting himself as Jesus. Now, I want to say to you that I do not believe that Jesus is a, a literal character, a historical figure. But listen to what the, our, our um, brother Prince York says, this is not the real image. That means that he also believes that Jesus must be a real person. What does that mean, the real image? What is a real image of a mythological character? Family, we have to be really careful with this. By the way, he talks about how important the intonation of words are, but then he tells you that he continues to use the word Egypt because he's teaching. But then he tells you that you need to know the language and speak it properly in order for it to do things. But then he continually in your face says Egypt, boldly. You got to call him on this, family. I will not give my legacy away to the Tom who you shouldn't either. And you need to call this young man on it so he can learn and be better. That's what you need to do. I, he, he says to you that distance doesn't matter with regard to the creation of civilizations. I, how could you make that? Who would ever make that argument? Distance doesn't matter. We know that Kemet was ruled by the same people in that period. Actually, we know that it wasn't ruled by the same people. Did you ever hear something about the, the, the um, Namar palate? When he comes forward and he defeats people on the, on the coast in northern Africa to unify and to create one kingdom? We know that it wasn't ruled by the same people during that time. So why is he even trying to make that argument? Because he hasn't studied enough history. Because he's discarding everything that he believes comes from the Tom Who. Well, then just read my book, because I'm not a Tom Who. Because I'm going to tell you that um, he needs to do more work on his historical sources to be able to stand here with me. I wasn't, I wasn't planning on doing this to this dear brother. I wanted us to have a dialogue. He asked, you saw it on camera, he asked to do this. I just prepared three slides and the brother can't handle it. You gotta understand that this is the way that you come together and try to articulate ideas in front of people. And if you're not able to do it, then when you come against brother Jabari, it's gonna be light work. And that's just the reality. Ask him once again about, um, uh, ask him once again about what he says about pre-dynastic people. I don't have to actually know his new Oppian language. I just wanted to tell you, how was it created? What is his purpose? You know, if he said to me, it's an ancient language. Who in the world would say new Oppic is an ancient language? If that's what you're saying, that doesn't make sense. Uh, even if you're trying to draw from ancient sources to create a language, once you're doing that, it's a new language. All languages are based on the languages that come before them. Just like English has some corollaries from ancient languages. That doesn't mean English is an ancient language. Who would make that argument? Not even the Tom who would make that argument. And they want to try to put themselves on top of the world. Family, please ask this brother to learn the history of the region 
and to take a good science class. Because if he does that, he'll be able to address this easier. He won't just discard all of, of genetic studies. He won't just discard all of the things that he, say come, he says come from the Tom Hu. You have to understand that any scholar is supposed to put forward the data by which they make their arguments. You could disagree with the argument, but you have to be able to look at their data. Family, stop giving that to the Tom Hu. Stop it. Data is data. You could disagree with the data. You can't just discard the whole book just because a Tom who did it. By the way, this is just a translation. Uh, Miriam Lichtem didn't read, write this book. The Tom who was just describing what you did when you were on the throne, family. Learn as much as you can. And also understand that until we are able to muster the resources to get as many of our scholars to have archaeology degrees, as many of our scholars to have um, degrees in linguistics, not just hear a few languages and call themselves a linguist, but to actually study linguistics. I'm sitting here with someone who has a linguistics degree, one of two black linguistics majors at one of the toughest institutions in the world. To call myself a linguist would be to disrespect her study. That's the reason why I didn't call myself a linguist. But in terms of language, this young man can't deal with me. He can't. You just saw him fumble several times. It's embarrassing. Have him prepare. Now understand his trajectory is very high. A 45-year-old Prince York would probably do uh, some good work on a 45-year-old Jabari Osasa. I respect him enough to say that. But I'm telling you that in order for him to get there, there's some information he needs. Please don't allow him to be so ensconced in his tradition that he's going to discard all the things he needs to become a better scholar and to become a better leader to our people. Peace. Peace. Last you want to get back, man? Come of course. On. You know he want to get back. Of course. I'm a you know York. he want to get back. I'm a York. Just, just, <laughs> you know he want to get back. I'm a York. By the way, I didn't even read this. I was going to read some stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't even do it. <laughs> All right, back to back to the, the on, close back, out, back to the actual facts. Hungry, we got it. As, as long day. as I talk, he's gonna keep talking. Of course, because as long as <laughs> as long as long as bullshit walks, I gotta keep sweeping it. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It's, that's what it is. So once again, to revisit the conversation, once again, Dr. Malachi Z. York again, and it wasn't my body posture. It was only because the brother was standing here. And I didn't want to stand on top of him. Plus, the cameras are both faced this way. But Dr. Malachi. If you can put it back on the screen if you'd like. Dr. Malachi York was not attempting to, to give forth an image of a Christ-like image. Yeah, sure. Do, with Dr. Malachi, yeah, go ahead. With Dr. Malachi, make sure you get the camera on it too. With Dr. Malachi York in this image, and this is not even the image of Jesus in our books. And I'm not saying that, and no, Nuwapians do not adhere to Jesus being a, 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 a person in reality, a literal person. No, we do not hold to that whatsoever. Right? Dr. Malachi York in this image is depicting, and if you actually read the books where this image came out of, he said, he was talking about where Jesus stated, when I see you, I see God. Ye are gods. And Baba, and my father, we call him Baba means father. My father was saying, yo, you guys are the Messiah. And he depicted himself, and everybody in his books are images of people within our community, even to this day. There's images of my mother. Right? Of my very own mother, drawing of my mother as Fatima in ancient time. Not meaning that's the real image of Fatima, just so the people in the community would be for, would be begin to, and this is in the, and plus these images are very old, but this is in the time period where our people were still trying to understand whether religious people in the books were black or white. Now we know obviously today that we are past those schools of thought. Obviously, we're on side of the TV, we're getting unlimited affirmation. But the goal was to show and prove that we are gods. That that was the point. And Dr. Malachi's York, being a God himself, because we can't deem everybody else gods and then leave the teacher out, being a God himself, he said, I'm going to show and prove and correct that. Look at his hand gesture. His hand gesture is nothing Christ-like. Actually, this hand gesture is seen in all Dr. Malachi's York's posters. And, and, and he has his own meanings behind it in which he created and instituted himself. As far as the holding of the lamb, holding of the lamb, if you study biblical texts, which Dr. Malachi's York is a master of, the holding of the lamb has always been a representation of a messenger. Now, the, now all of a sudden, the picture... No, I'll show you the image. You want me to leave it up? I will. Leave it up until I finish. Okay, okay.
I don't know what you was about to show me, but I want you to leave it up till I finish. Okay. Uh, the, the holding of the lamb has always been a, a depiction of the coming of the messenger. And the lamb in biblical text has been termed as meek to be to admit that one is meek or humble. Even my father has went back on his own studies and said, I do not want my people to depict themselves as lambs. He said, never depict yourself as that because the lamb is utilized in biblical text as sacrifice. And we as black people have been sacrificed too much. So please don't let Brother Jabari's fast words. And he's a great speaker too. He knows at just what point, and I might even take speech lessons from him. He knows gr just what points to get loud and just what points to get low, how to smile when. I'm, I'm watching his mannerisms. It's great. It reminds me of my father when my father sat down with Farrakhan. My father said himself. He said, Farrakhan's a much greater speaker, but he doesn't have more knowledge than me. <gasps> one more time, if you go to the, can you mind going to the side of the map? Of, of the, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Of, the, one of the, um, the map of Nakata and Nepata. Okay, there, we there we go. Now, if you see right here, this right here is where, um, is where modern day Nepata is, and this is is where modern day Nakada or Nakata is, right? This entire region in pre dynastic and proto dynastic, I ain't talking about Norma. Norma is the first of the dynastic period. I'm talking about pre dynastic periods. This entire region was the same. And I, I'll give him this I'll give him the, all the air and oxygen to breathe on this one. We, I, I'll, I'll settle and put my hand down. On the, on the argument of whether the Sudanese pyramids are older or younger, because that debate is still going on amongst some of the most prominent scholars. The entire Sudanese government, I don't know if you know this is fact, but earlier this year in March, the Sudanese government had all of their archaeologists doing work on the pyramids to get an exact date to prove. So that's a debate that we can argue about when more and more facts can be compiled as of right now, being the fact that m m m uh, most relevant sources are still in the debate process themselves. We'll get to that. And I'll, and I'll give Brother Jabari the benefit of the doubt, right? That, that means I'll spare the fool, the one who does not know. To acknowledge you do not know is what? To ignore the facts. Ignorance. Now, the distance between a city has almost absolutely no correlation. Because I did not say that Nakada was the capital, nor did I say Napata was the capital. So finding room to try to debunk that is almost, is almost irrelevant. The Nubian and the Egypt, I don't, I don't understand how anybody could disagree that Nubian and Egypt was unified. I don't I, like I, that's where my confusion is at. The brother is absolutely correct. This is one thing that the brother said. Make sure you get this what I agree upon. The brother is absolutely correct. The brother, uh, uh, the brother Jabari, when he stated that Prince York has a lot of studying to do. Remember, Brother Jabari asked to speak with me, so obviously I must be qualified to speak with him because, and we've seen, and let's please not talk uh, ego boasting about debates because we done seen young Marcus tear up grown men. We done seen, and he was 17, we done seen young Pharaoh rip up niggas in their 50s. So, so, I mean, it is what it is. You got to give credit where credit due. You done seen the brother take W's on elders who ain't, because elders are what? They're stuck in their ways. Do I honor my elders? Of course. Do I respect my elders? Of course. I still to this day can pay homage to Sheks to imams, to pastors, and still sit down with them and take their wisdom. But does that mean just because you are, what, 20 years older than me, you're always right? It does not. The exact amount of time that he's been studying is barely over my actual age. And I've been studying my entire life, being the fact that I was born Nuwapian. And Sinetta even had to remind Brother Jabari of this off camera. Remember Jabari, he was born Nuwapian. Sinetta, you said that, right? Yes, I did. Remember, he was born. So the studies I've been studying. Now, Brother Jabari is attempting to debunk. Go to the next slide, please. Brother Jabari, which one? Which, the, the only one we didn't show, not that one, that one. Okay. The only other thing, the only thing, one, one I don't uphold to an Adam and Eve story whatsoever. Um, I, what, what we as Nuwapians uphold to is we as Nuwapians more so deal with uh, a constant evolutionary pr pr process of our people. We say that Africans have always existed on this planet, if you want to say in primitive form of not. That's not my, 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 uh, my, my, my purpose of the debate. So I really, I'm really not going to even be interested in Brother Jabari's response. My main thing that I want Brother Jabari to respond on is I want him to constantly reverb back to Napata and Nakata. Also, the Nuwapic language, because he said, Nuwapic, da, 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 da. no, bruh. Once again, you do not speak any language. I, I, I said, and I said straight to Jabari, face to face. I spoke to him in fluent Amharic. I, flo I spoke to him in, I, I, I gave many of terms, and I had to baby the terms down. So I that you heard me. I had to baby the terms down. That's when we was upstairs, not down here. You heard me. I said, I said, 
Let's, I said, let's do a translation. Did I not say that? I said, I'm going to say certain things and tell me if you know what I'm saying. He was not able to say anything I was saying. But then when I asked him, when he asked me what certain words was, every word that he asked me matched the metal netta. I'm not saying the Wapik and the metal netta is the same language. No, I'm saying that the indigenous people in the surrounding areas had their own languages and their languages were dialects of the real metal netta. And the Caucasian who has, and I'm not doing it out of racial hate, I'm doing it out of fact, has dictated to the world the knowledge of what he wants us to know. And, th and thus, him coming from the school of studying that madness and me coming from the school of saying, I will, and nor did I debunk the book. I never said debunk a book. I said, I study both. I, and so I never would attest to that. I said, we, we, say the Af we say the Caucasian does not have the fact that we will study the facts on our own and then return and sift through and see what the Caucasian says as fact or fiction. Did I not say that, Sinetta? Careful. Come on, don't destroy it. Yes, you did. That's what I said. I said, we would, we, would, you know, we would not use the Caucasian as the point of reference to prove Africans right. We would use the Africans as the point of reference to, to, to prove Caucasians right or wrong. I strongly disagree with Caucasians being of any African descent, but I'm not going to keep going back and forth on that because that, that to me, we, like I said, we ought to put together a video. To the cocky and the ego thing about the debate, I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and even, even allow y'all to entertain that conversation. We know Dr. Malik Isaac created the debate platform, and, and as the brother has said, his, some of his first foundations in the science has come from my, my father as well. So, and even his teacher, Baba Haru, even, even his... I don't understand what you said. Even his teacher, Baba Haru, has even just on the phone gave so much excitement, and Sinetta will, oh, Sinetta will agree, so much excitement and so much applause to both my father and his brother who contributed muchly to the comedic community. That's exactly what he said. He even talked about how he felt honored at the fact that my father would ask uh, Baba Haru to design a piece for him. And Baba Haru even talked about how he was invited personally to Tamaray, our land, where we actually rebuilt Egypt instead of just going to visit the cemetery. And, and, and we, we, he, he was actually invited and was able to come back. So, close out. My phone get ready to die. We can close out together. Or, or you want to rebut? How you going to say that and not want me to say anything back? Oh, go ahead. You yeah. can't say that stuff and not. You can't let me not say this stuff. Well, well, first of all, you should understand. Well, um, Brother Sonetta, when you called me today, did I say peace, brother? Of course you said peace, brother. And, and Brother Sonetta, did I ask you when um, Prince York was coming over? Did I ask him when, he was, when you were coming over? Did I not ask you when he was coming over, Brother Sonetta? Yes, sir, you did. And in fact, uh, Prince York, did I ask you if you wanted something to drink when you came in? You did. By the way, what am I doing here, family? <laughs> Prince York does something really cool. I like it, but I want to diffuse it. He asks things that are not in debate, and he asks people to confirm whether it happened or not. That doesn't help his argument. He is asking us to agree to things that are immaterial. He is asking us to agree to things that have nothing to do with the discussion. So I think that's a really, if he was with a less seasoned debater, maybe I'd get shook by that. But I've seen it before. So that, that, doesn't, that doesn't phase me at all. Get, getting Sonnet to agree with something that no one is disagreeing. No, you can't yet. You, I, I got I to go further here really quickly because we have very little time. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so uh, uh, Prince York has actually said to us that the Sudanese government is trying to look at data to prove that the Mirkuti in um, Sudan are older. I want him to pull forth some, uh, some documents that say that that's what they're doing. Because I have spoken to many people who are working with the Sudanese government on their Merkuti, mm -hmm. and I have never heard them say that. Mm -hmm. uh, let us be clear, I am quite sure that the Sudanese government is not arguing that the Merkuti are older than Kemet. They don't need to. See, the reason he doesn't know history enough to actually give the best sources. Let me help him here. Help me. Why didn't he ask me about the coastal site? I'm going to actually help him with his debate. Mm. Because the coastal site, it's because I, I actually like this brother. It's not, we, we, we don't hate each other. Uh, but the coastal site is earlier than dynastic Kemet. That's what you should ask me about. And if you want to know about, more about the coastal site, go see the coastal incense burner in Chicago. It shows you all of the iconography of Kemet you think I'm a, you think I'm in Nubia. 
Why would you be a fool? <laughs> he thinks I'm a fool. Why? Why would you be the a fool? Fact that he would even put together in his in his in his mind the fact that he even put together the fact that I that, that I'm not that I'm not equipped with the like that's what I'm saying. Instead of actually attacking my initial arguments about the na- about the about the landmass, because like even with the word that he that he says meruneta is mirkuti. If you go to the Nuwapic word for pyramid, but once again I use the English term for those who don't understand. I like to help the if the people who already know will get right into the books. As far as me, I'm an introduction. I'm not the master teacher. So so I help the people who don't know. I tell them the words that they need to know so therefore they can make the self-connection. Everybody's not, and that's your style of teaching. And You have to really stop insulting my style and just be comfortable with us being who we are. Now, the Mirkuti, in the Nuwapic language, we, the exact... The, the question wasn't Mirkuti. In, but, but hold on, I'm going to put that in there. But, <laughs> Why do you always do that? But, the, but, in, the, but in the Nuwapic, oh, wait, wait, wait. In the Nuwapic I, language, I, in the Nuwapic I, language, I, mir is actually the exact same, I, I, mir is actually the exact same I, I, word I for pyramid. So, so the confusion with brother... This, this I got you. I'm just. Here. I was just asking. I'm asking my question. So, but, no, but that answer the question. Mir has is the exact same word in the Nuwapic language. So once again, he has not studied the Nuwapic. I actually encourage him, and I said I give him the books with no charge to study the Nuwapic language, and then and then when you bring opposing argument, then you'll shake me because he talks about him being a well experienced debater. I've been doing this since I came out the womb. This is not new to me. When Nuwapians have been ciphering languages forever, over 54 okay. years, the mass he. He's an elder in age. He's not an elder in wisdom. Okay. Please, please note that. And okay. his teacher even upholds to much please, respect please be, to my please, own. Please don't do that. That's I'm closing out. This Prince York. I'm closing when I'm supposed to be closing. He got to close out. He got to close he out. He goes out. What? It's Prince York. This, this Peace is to everybody. Really Prince York is out. And, and remember, Prince York has always been undefeated in debate. And no scholar anywhere will ever beat Prince York in debate. And I like how the brother's holding the mic for me because, to show me so much because, respect. Because really, really what you're doing. I gave him the mic. I gave him the mic. I'm not going to shake your hand yet because I want you to stay to, to listen to this. I gave him the, the mic simply because, and I, I want to give you some things before you leave. I gave him the mic because he was supposed to be, he this was supposed to respond to, the to me Dan, all as of us early in those in Let the me back. also, he we says that I take, he he's taking upstairs. issue with um, the himself. depiction of Dr. York as, as Jesus the Christ here. Now let's be clear. I don't think this is the worst thing that Dr. Then York Then he comes back down because he forgot his I'm computer. I'm saying that we have to be cautious the about these house. images. That's what I said to you, family. That's what I said. If he doesn't believe that Dr. York was doing that, then he needs to actually show me all of the images of, of, of Jesus the Christ in different books that don't show him. That don't show him. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Now, he also had the nerve to say that he also had the nerve to... What are you looking for? Laptop. It's here. It's here. It's here. He also, he also had the nerve to say... I'm not going to hold this stuff hostage. I'm not... I'm not I'm not, wait, that's, that's disrespectful. You need, to, you need to wait because now you're distracting and that's not cool. So you also need to know that he says that he spoke languages to me and I couldn't speak to him. That brother was not speaking the Now he never. runs back up in the man's house. I do not house, speak the Amharic. Am- but it didn't we sound like I'm hard. I've been to Ethiopia. I, I, so I know what I it sounds like. I don't know what he was speaking. To, brother, you can't and that's what I told him. House. I said, brother, I don't know what you're speaking. If you out. show me a few words in Nuwapu that are the same as the Medunetta, so that Dr. doesn't say Anika that an entire language is the same. I told you that the word for shaft of light in English is ray. And that comes from Ray, the sun deity from Kemet. Because I can show you that, does that mean that English is the meadow netter? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Don't let him flim flam you, family. <laughs> because that is, that's, that's, that's not even a good logical argument. Don't let him get away with that. By the way, he also said that Baba Heru. Heru, Baba Heru Ankara Samad so Sepata, one of Anika my greatest teachers and my and spiritual father, as you heard me call him, gave lots of respect and love to his family at. and his uncle. And that is true. Baba Heru does always give love and respect to his family. And you know what? Here's the deal. I would like to also give love and respect to his family. You have heard me say that I look at Dr. York and what he was able to do, and I say, I wish that I am able to do some of the things that he's done. I admire much of what Dr. York has done. I disagree with much of uh, many other things, but I admire things that he was able to do that I am not able to do. If you are flying the wa- on the wall in my home, me speaking to my queen, the last few days, you would hear me say 
I want to know how Dr. York was able to build that community. How did he finance it? What did he do? How did he do it? Now, I heard some things that I don't think are great, but the reality is I could critique. All right, family. Y'all seen it? I would like for y'all to tell me where and when did our brother Jabari disrespected Prince? Damn, you can hear the music coming from outside. This mic is bad. When did Jabari disrespect Prince York and said the things that Prince York accused him of saying on them two videos that he put up? Very disrespectful. Where did you see him do that? You didn't see it, family. You see? So it proved that my brother Prince York lied on the man. Very disrespectful. Now, let me say this real quick, too. Um, some, per some people keep asking me, Sonetta, Sonetta, are you boycotting the NFL? No, I am not boycotting the NFL. Why would I waste my time Trying to boycott the NFL. I tell you what I will boycott, though. I'll boycott the stores that we have out here so we could do the takeover. Do y'all want to do that? See, you don't want to boycott something and then take it over because you want to do something that ain't got nothing to do with us. Who give a damn about the NFL? What is that going to do for us? Think about that. What is the boycott in the NFL going to do for us? But I tell you what. We could boycott the Chinese restaurants. We could boycott the stores and the bodegas and be ready to take over. Y'all want to do that? Mum's the word. Now we can hear crickets. See, you don't want to do something that's going to benefit us in our community. Who the hell give a damn about boycotting the damn NFL? Boycotting the NBA? Boycotting tennis? Come on, family. Get real. Let's do a real fight. Boycott the damn stores. And let's begin to take over them. That's what I boycott. Saw is an agent. Okay, nigga. Get the fuck out my chat room. I heard Saw is an agent. I heard your mother was too. So now we're going to move on. Black him. Because that's a distraction. See, niggas like him come in here to distract people. Okay? So we block niggas like that and we keep it moving. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, my man Captain Tazariak, I um I hope you still here because let me say this to you. Okay, Captain Tazariak said we don't say the European is an Israelite. That's he's saying that because Jabari's made the statement and said. The European is nothing but an African. He comes out of Africa. Okay. So Captain Tazari, I guess he think he said something powerful. He said, we don't say the European is, is an Israelite. You don't need to say it. But I tell you one thing that you said, Captain Tazari, and one thing that we all know is that, God damn it, the European comes out of a black womb. See, you don't need to say the European is an is a Israelite. We know now by your own scriptures, by your own book, by your own words that came out of your mouth that the European, that, that she, that they had, it was twins in the womb and that the most high separated the nations. Okay. The Most High can separate the nations all the fuck he want. But guess what? That goddamn Caucasian man came out of the womb of a black woman. Am I right or am I wrong? You said this. Or did, or did he come out of a white womb? And did you come out of a white womb, Captain? Or Hebrews? So, let's get it right. He came out of a black womb, according to your scriptures, according to your own testimony, Captain Tazoriak. So, whether you want to admit that the white man is an Israelite or not, 
God damn it. Y'all can say what y'all want. The most high separated the nations inside of the womb. That sounds slick. But you share the same goddamn DNA. You shared the same damn sperm that came. I don't know why is this so hard for Hebrews to get. Because when y'all say that, the side, yo, the number one, the Caucasian would not be born had it not been for the black sperm that planted the seed in the womb. Now, whether the whether the most high separated them in the womb or not, that's not the question. I'm not answer, I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking you about was it a black man that planted the seed? You say, yeah. Did the white man come out of the white womb? No. He came out of a womb of a black woman. That's all I'm saying. You see? So even with your own logic, man, where the fucking bomb at? Come on. There you go. <laughs> there you go. With your own shit. I like when y'all stick your head up out the dirt so I know that agent. That way I get I could get the chance to block you niggas. I love it. So keep coming out. Keep sticking your head up so that way you won't be in the chat room the next coming. You understand? So family, I mean, it is what it is. Y'all saw the video. You saw the debate for yourself. Now, do you still think Prince York was very disrespectful for making that video? I say, hell yeah. Prince York is still my little brother, though. But um, thank y'all for tuning in, family. We out of here. Peace and black power, family. Shit that you've been told, and you need that info. info. Sign it up, TV. Sign it up, TV. Tune in the consciousness and watch the lies fall. Then you can let the truth flow. Oh. Sign it up, TV. Sign it up, TV. When you feel that melanin about to explode, like you feel the wind blow. It's Sign it up, TV. Sign it up, TV. I know you got the truth, but you can get more So you continue to grow Sanera TV Sanera TV Yeah, 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 make sure 
I'm going to give y'all that other part on um, Patreon. Who that, y'all? Anybody know who that is? Yeah. Shout out to my sister right there. I know you watching. That I could just roll the streets and never hold a beef If there was ever a bad time Don't just be just stick together We could set a better tone on the streets Son of the TV's right on time Ain't no masquerade to no network games to play It'd be the new pastime It'd be the new pastime If it was ever a good time But we could just live in peace And didn't kill our peeps Ain't no more walking around blind Ain't no stopping, it's the consciousness that dropping us the people to see If we could live in the sunshine without being a slave Free from all stress and hate Would that be the last sign? Saw Meta T That's the melanin goddess right there, y'all. Y'all know what it is. The melanin goddess in the building. 